And now, it's time for the Freedom Fiends Agenda live call-in show. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Call in before they get droned. Live right now on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. How's that? That's as loud that's a, as my mic will That's a lot go. better. That's a lot better. I think that's All right. a good mix. <sighs> yeah. Nima is soft. Nima will be less soft in a moment. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Jesus, man. That fucking sucks. Fuck that. Okay, you've used three. Yeah. We've used three of our fucks. Uh, four. So we only get one more, and then we have to pay Bitcoin to Adam Curry because he's the free market FCC. Okay. So, okay. We've only got five Bitcoin. You know, people give us money, but they never get Bitcoin. And uh, We used to get Bitcoin. I know. Can you turn your treble up a little bit? I know I had to turn it up last time, but uh. it, it's at it's at ten, man. That's as high as it goes. I can't turn okay. it to eleven. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. You if if I'm running into your mixer, you could. Well, I guess I'm not, huh? I'm going straight nope. to software. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, so I, I that's the mic, man. Okay. Let me turn down just a little bit, and then I'll turn up the final output. How's that? Talk, talk, talk. All right. Yeah. And you're just in time for the Freedom Fiends. So, Nima, um, uh-huh. uh, did you see the news about Iran today? Uh, no, no. What is um, it? Well, John Bolton was on Fox talking about how the Pentagon had just said that uh, on November 1st, Iran tried to shoot down an American drone. Of course, they oh. didn't release this information until after the uh, election for some reason uh-huh. because, you know, well, the the then he the warmongering Democrats would be like, man, maybe I'll vote for Romney. He'll blow them back to the Stone Age. When really it was just you know, I think that's self defense. You send a spy drone over someone. It was actually I think they chased it from Iran out to uh, over the Strait of Hormuz, which they're considering uh, international waters somehow. America uh, and then sh- huh. and tried to shoot it down and missed. And I'm thinking, like, America would do that and hit it and say it's not an act of aggression. They're not saying it's an act of aggression. They're, like, debating whether it's an act of aggression. So, uh, you know. Well, if you remember in the run-up to the Iraq War, uh, that was one of the things they used to justify was that Saddam was always shooting at American planes. But the American planes planes are are always flying over his country. (laughs) Or not his country, but Planes have people in them. Planes have people in them. You know, drones don't. Uh, yeah, that's it too. Yeah. Planes have humans, and if you shoot them, they die. And if you shoot a drone, you just kill a big model airplane. Yeah, yeah. And you just waste a whole bunch of tax money that yeah. was already stolen from us. So now I think you should turn down a little bit. I should turn down a little bit because you're a little clippy. Yeah. I, on, I on sound the, very hot in my ear, but dude, uh, I'm so always hot. wrong. So sounds so hot. Well, you know, I don't use my really good headphones. Here's just some news you can use. Um. I use my really good headphones for the other stuff, but we have, uh, it's such a weird ballet of audio balance on this show live for some reason. Um, yeah. So, you know, the other one we just plug in and go, and I'm not criticizing anyone. I've been going back and forth with the internet gnomes at No Agenda trying to figure out solutions, but, uh, and, you know, Dave. Anyway, so uh, I use my cheap, like, web headphones not to talk through, but to listen through because they have a volume control on them. Whereas my, uh-huh. uh, cause okay. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm coming out the headphone jack into a splitter and one goes into my headphones and the other goes wired into my other computer, which is running, uh, but the new improved version of, but, Oh, we could try that now. If someone, let's see if we're too hot. Stop repeating me. Boy, damn it. Okay. Talk a little Nima. Yeah. All right. Talk, 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 yeah. talk, 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 talk. Yeah. How's the mix and volume yeah. now? Okay, I'm gonna I still feel like I'm a little bit loud, but maybe I'm just right. I don't know. Uh, I, well, I really think we should do it by what I hear because I'm recording us for the archives and I'm uh, send, sending us to the butt. Yeah, yeah. So you're if you think you're too loud, <coughs> excuse me. Turn my he- I can turn my headphone gain down, but then you sound quiet to me. Hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know. So right, whatever. Um, so we, uh, you know, we don't have the litany of donations that No Agenda gets, but we got a donation of 140 bucks this week, and that's pretty damn sweet. I want to thank the guy for that. Yeah, he didn't say he could use his name, but uh, you know, he does. He doesn't want to get droned. I know. I, you know, that's one reason I think we get less donations than other people is because people are afraid they're going to end up on a list for donating. Uh, do you think we're that extreme? I don't feel like we're that extreme. You're always like going on about how. You follow laws and stuff, so that's pretty. 
non-extreme, isn't it? Yeah. Don't don't it. We're not we're not we're not a drone risk, man. Relax. <laughs> hey, relax, buddy. We're not on the state sanctioned what is we're the, not on the, the list? kill list. We're, on the we're not on the list kill yet. list. We're on the what watch, kill list. What are you watch, talking about? We're on the watch carefully list. So did you see my um <laughs> did you see my uh Montana meth project takeoff picture that I'm gonna use for today's uh thing? <laughs> are you in the chat Explain room? Explain to people what the Montana uh meth project is. Are you in the chat room? No, not yet. Oh, uh, go in the chat room. I'm a bad little boy today. You really are, man. You were like you were like asleep five minutes before we came on, weren't you? No, no. I woke up at a decent hour, and then I did some research find and wrote something Bitcoin. for the notes. And I'm gonna find uh, you. You can find me a Bitcoin. Okay, find me. You know, Bitcoin. it's more important. To it, be it was because I needed to eat, and so I went and got food with my wife. And I guess I should have just starved for my art. Your wife is getting in the way of the fiends. <laughs> no, it's She's my stomach Yoko. more than anything. Yeah, yeah. You would if you were single. You would have done that. You would go. I gotta yeah. go out and eat. I love your yeah. wife. She's great. I don't yeah. love your yeah. wife, but I love, I love your wife, man. Yeah, you know my wife. She's we we love each well, other's wives, but uh, she's one yeah. of the fiends, and she uh, does all of our voiceover stuff, the female yeah. voiceover. Yeah. Although your wife did one little thing, which is really cool. She did her valley <laughs> girl impression. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Actually, that was just her being her. <laughs> I gotta get cigarettes. Talk for a while. Talk about uh, why you were late today. Oh, you're just doing that to get revenge. Uh, I was late because of my freaking mic, man. I don't know. Michael couldn't hear me. Uh, I was running just as I always run. But uh, for some reason now, you know, this damn SM audio preamp, it sounds so great when it works. And I'm not even using it now, so that, that's not what sounds great. But I don't know, man. I turned on the, uh, what do you call it, the phantom power, and everything sounded horrible. Like, the phantom power made uh, an ocean sound. Like, I was inside of a conch shell. Um, and <laughs> as soon as conch. I turned the phantom power off, conch. the the conch shell would slowly fade away. So I know it's the damn phantom power. Uh, I just Why don't know what to do about power? it. Man. I thought you were using uh, a ribbon I was using mic. the condenser mic. I always use the condenser mic for the Curry show because the ribbon mic to? through the preamp. No, well, because the ribbon mic, because there's so much stuff in my chain that the ribbon mic's noise just gets too uh, hot because the ribbon mic goes through the S&M, then it goes through the new mark mixer, and then it goes into uh, the M audio, and then it gets transferred from um, mumble. Uh, so that much in the chain for the ribbon mic doesn't work. It works for the condenser, or it used to. I don't know what's going on with the damn phantom power, but... Yeah. yeah, sorry guys. Sorry, well, I think you need I to buy up. the seventeen dollar mic I bought that uh, a bunch of audio engineers actually believed was a five hundred dollar RE twenty. Do you do you need phantom power for a no. dynamic mic? No, no. You only okay, need phantom good. power for condenser mics. Period. Mm. Well, fuck that condenser mic, man. That shit's pissing me. Dude, off. I'll send you the link. You can order it right now. You got some Amazon cash? Mm. You got seventeen dollars uh, left probably. over from your thousand dollar DJ three thousand. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. You got me there. I can't refuse. So the Montana Meth Project. Uh, yes. Basically, there's this, basically some, I don't know who is behind it. Probably George Soros, but uh, no, he's pro-drug. Uh, probably Mitt Romney or uh, Santorum. Somebody anonymously said, we need to attack meth by putting up softcore kitty porn billboards all over the uh, Mountain West. Well, actually, they said they had this idea for it, and they researched and they said, "What state or area could we spend the least amount of money and get to the highest percentage of the population and a mm -hmm. place where there's a lot of meth use?" And they picked Montana. So they hired Darren Aronofsky, the director of Requiem for a Dream, who's interviewed in my movie Hubert Selby Jr. It'll be better tomorrow, which uh, you can download that and all of the Fiends movies and episode at the episodes at the we have a seed box now we're torrenting like motherfuckers oh shit that's five all um, right N no more f-bombs yeah damn it yeah so um they hired darren aronofsky the you know di amazing director of Requ requiem for dream to direct these they paid him like four million dollars which is like as much as he spent making requiem for dream they they paid him that to make like wow eight eight thirty second anti-meth uh, I knew they had him work on it. I didn't know he got paid that much. Jesus, yeah. Yeah. that's so, so much for a PSA, man. That's, well, he that's made like outrageous. he made like eight of them, and they also ripped off the look of them and had nobody yeah. direct and film the rest right. of them, and then right. used his look. I mean, this billboard that I posted looks like you know a Darren Aronofsky still. So 
they hired all these non-meth addict, non-union meth addicts, no, these non-meth addicts <laughs> from like San Francisco and New York ad agencies, you know, which is part of the problem is like they try to put monster makeup on them and make their teeth bad and make them look tore up, but they still look pretty sexy. And they're all like 18, but they're like playing 15. Um, you know, but it's basically like softcore kitty porn and they put it on fucking billboards in Wyoming, in Montana, Wyoming, the Dakotas, Idaho, Colorado, and Utah. Um, and it's really offensive to drive down the street and see this big taxpayer funded piece of shit mm -hmm. with like, you know, some little girl going into a truck stop bathroom with some truckers or, you know, some like teenage boy beating up his grandmother to steal her check. Uh, and I don't, I think they make people do meth. I don't think they, you know, if I were in early recovery from meth, these would make me go, oh, yeah, it still looks good, you know, even though they're horrible. <laughs> uh, yeah, I miss the good old days. <laughs> so the election was really horrifying. I mean, I knew Obama would win. It didn't matter. I'd be horrified if Romney won, possibly more Was it so. horrifying? I felt like it, it just passed with no... I didn't watch TV, but I had a bad day. I was like... Uh. It just kind of like confirmed everything. And, you know, yeah. I wrote a kind of, I wrote a kind of statist, um, a minarchist reply to the Republicans that was like, hey, hey, told you so. Um, what angle did it take? Did it well, take it was based the, on two years ago, I wrote an article when I was a Republican libertarian before I found the truth of anarchy. Um, uh -huh. I wrote an article for the RLC basically saying, <clears throat> open letter to the GOP, basically saying, run Ron Paul or you're doomed to a democratic socialist majority ah. forever. forever. So it was, the, it was the Ron Paul's revenge angle. Yeah. And the, yeah. you know, the last, the last thing on this post basically says, uh, says, enjoy. <laughs> Let me read it to you. It says, uh, enjoy an end endless parade of kleptocracy by voting at your expense. It's entirely your fault and enjoy president Hillary in 2016. You, you made that happen and enjoy yeah. 40 or 50 years of justices holder and Sunstein. You built that. That's the end. Of uh. it. Yeah. Mm. So, okay. Um, okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. There was a bunch of memes going around of uh, showing the people who uh, voted for Ron Paul in the primaries, like the numbers of people in in the swing states, and then showing the number of votes that Romney lost by uh, in the swing states. Uh, I guess trying to make the point that if if those people had voted for Romney instead of Ron Paul, you know, it was the same people that were abstaining from voting for Romney that cost Romney the election. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but uh, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Voting's just gay anyway. Well, there was um, actually two things happened locally <clears throat> that made me happy. And I shouldn't care as an anarchist, but that's what newly minted anarchists say. They say, well, you shouldn't care. But actually, on a, and I didn't vote, but on a local level, two things happened. And I believe that if you do vote, you can't complain. That's my new slogan. Because if you do vote, you're taking part in all the shit. But yeah, yeah, I was kind of under the same impression. But uh, you know, that's that's already been said uh, uh, by us and yeah. also George Carlin. George, George Carlin, Carlin has you know, a great. I bit said on it, that, yeah. and then I heard George Carlin's thing on Scott Horton the other day. I listened to Scott yeah. Horton's like thing about Ron Paul. It made me weep. It made me go like, okay, I'm not a constitutionalist, but this guy is so great. And why did America just go? No, he'll destroy America, and children will be working in meth meth prostitute houses. You know. Yeah, yeah. But, I guess because uh, people get the government they want, like he went on to say, you know, that yeah. that's what it really is. Is it's the and George Carlin has a bit on this too. You know, uh, the politicians don't fall from the sky. You know, they come from the public. So if the public sucks, the politicians are going to suck. Yeah, well, a couple things happened locally that made me really happy. Um, I've actually been the library tax failed. Yeah, which I've been ranting about on the freedom fiends for about two months, almost every cast, uh, you know, they were stealing a bunch of taxpayer money to send out these four color glossy things. Like think of the children every week to every voter in town. You know, they probably spent a quarter million dollars doing that. I mean, on, yeah. on the, on the let's, let's raise $8 million thing. Ugh. Um, mm -hmm. and it was to steal a bunch of money to buy and to build a new library in a town that already has a really decent library for, for you know, this amount of people. And, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, the Natrona County Library is pretty posh. Yeah, um, and the thing is, the one that they wanted to build, I just found out yesterday, was going to be like out of town. It was going to be like up near the Petroleum Club. 
Who uh, the fuck could get to that? Well, you know, that's not too I far. Mean, but yeah, that's not like the one. It's, the one the that one currently now is, exists. You could walk is downtown. from the high school. You know, yeah, there's a high exactly. school like five yeah. blocks away. So. Um, yeah, you can walk to it from the bars. You can uh, yeah. finish your your <laughs> beer and go straight to the library. Go surf porn. Yeah, yeah, go surf porn. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I used to always walk. Uh, I walk my dog downtown uh, late at night. I love which is always dogs weird in downtown you and I would, Casper. You and I would open carry pistols yeah. and walk your dog yeah. and have him poop on the library and then not clean it up because <laughs> That's it's right. public property. It public it's our property. property. <laughs> I forgot. That about was like that. one of the coolest. You know. Uh, yeah. Robin Kerner, I did an interview with him yesterday, and he was like, "We must get ready for 2016 to run uh, Gary Johnson." He I was, was not. I, I was so hoping self. he'd be an anarchist by now. Nope. Damn nope, it. Damn nope. it, Kerner. He was like, "We must be." But he actually said that we should have a an armed, peaceful, candlelight vigil in Washington D.C. for all mm. the children killed by war. I was like, "Really?" Well, he, he said that, hmm. but hmm. Yeah. okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, I guess he knows the problem. He just doesn't know. The, he still thinks the solution is politics. He, he hasn't gotten rid of the training wills yet. And I haven't heard it, but from what you've told me of it, that's what it sounds like. He just isn't ready to let go of that last fish, vestige, which, you know, it take different people have different thresholds and some people never get there. Um, but, you know, like you said, two years ago, you were a minarchist too. You were still like, oh, we just need to make sure Democrats don't get in office. Like that was going to be the solution to the world's ills. Yeah. You know, yeah. Gitmo Slave says he, he torrented down all our stuff. The thing is, you torrent it, but you could get it just off the cast. The idea is to torrent it, and you don't even have to share it on torrent. Just keep it in your torrent program so when we get droned, everybody can turn their torrent program in and save it and, and yeah. share it and, yeah. and publicize it. It's a lot easier if yeah. you have it that way. So, Warm. But yeah, you can get all our movies free, too. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom, Gun Training and the Non-Aggression Principle, DIY or Die, How to Survive as an Independent Artist, yeah. Hubert Sully Jr., pay- It'll Be Better Tomorrow. Or you could pay for them, too. That's cool. Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. So we're putting all our donations back into the cast. We're paying uh, 17 bucks a month for this seed box, and in about six months, it's going to go up to 27 bucks a month because we'll pass the 50 gig up you know, on the site. Uh, you know, actually, though, the seed box... Our seed flood seed box came back up, man. I don't know what's. I can't get a hold of the guy, but it's back up and running. So we have two seed boxes now. Uh, but uh. I'm not. I already paid six months in advance for the other one out of our okay. 140 dollars. Okay. So, so we'll but just have better. two seed boxes. More seed boxes the better. Yeah, it's the easier exactly. to download. More seed boxes, Shit. more seeds. Yeah, more growth. Yeah, we use magnet links. We have magnet links. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Magnet links are good, man. I mean, really, it's Speaking like no. That- Nobody uses torrents anymore, but we still have them available for. Uh, you can get the torrents by going to freedomfiends.cz, uh, which is our less droneable non US counterpart uh, media only mirror site. And there's a box on there, a folder on there called uh, Fiends, uh, Freedom Liberty Torrents or Freedom Torrents. You can get them all, all mm-hmm. our torrents there. But also, you can get all the episodes there too, and all the movies. Uh, and all the movies, yeah. And the printable PDF of the high res um, Target. That uh, somebody made in Prague. That's uh, it's got the UN symbol as the bullet. <laughs> the do not click here. Yes, it's in the do yes. not click here folder. Boy, you know, yes. you know, man, that's good. Yeah, yeah, hilarious. You got a light, um, you got a, pass me uh-huh. a light. Pass me a light. Here Please. you go. Thanks. Yeah. Go ahead. Worms. Uh, I was going to say, speaking of seed boxes and growth, um, what do you think about the the marijuana re-legalization in Colorado and Washington State? Oh, okay. Well, huh? do you hear me? What? I, I, do you hear I me? left. I had to get some cigarettes. I, had to get okay. <laughs> I couldn't read. The light you sent me was no good, man. Someone in oh, India bummer. is downloading the Hubert Selby Jr. movie right now. Oh, good for him. What did you fan. say about seed boxes? I missed it. I was I was trying to make a, a segue uh, from that to uh, the marijuana issue, uh, the oh. relegalization. <laughs> marijuana is legal. 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 Again. Well, they passed as legal. It doesn't Ish. go into effect for a while, but uh, marijuana is legal in Colorado and Washington State now yeah. by vote, yeah. although the feds may have something to say about that. But, you know, it'd be kind of interesting if the great, like, Tenth Amendment – you know, uh, nullification showdown that all the gun folk want actually comes from the weed folk. I'd love it. Well, it kind of already has been, right? I mean, I, I read an article making that argument 
years ago, uh, you know, with the medical stuff, because the medical stuff was never approved by the feds either. That, that's the same shit, just flying in the face of, of the feds state yeah. saying, hey, you go ahead and do this. And the feds saying no, um, especially Obama. Don't have any uh, illusions that Obama is somehow good on the marijuana issue. He had more raids on uh, DEA raids on medical marijuana places uh, in his four years than Bush did in his whole eight years. Barack Obama so, hates black people. Yeah, he sure does. Um, although, you know, at first when I heard these things, I was like, huh, I wonder if that, how that um, fits into, how we reconcile that into our crawl with you can't vote for more freedom, voting sucks kind of thing. Um, Other and then people I read can. The, I can't. Other people can. <laughs> you can't? I can't. It, my my non-voting thing is is uh, more a moral thing, and it's personal. It's my morality. Uh, you're and saying I, other people can vote, but you well, can't. some of my best friends vote, you know? Yeah. I still talk to them. <laughs> I treat them I'm like friends, real people. Some of my, my best friends are voters. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious. Um, well, I, I thought, though... It was important to actually look at the ballot language because it doesn't sound anything along the lines of freedom of ingestion or, yeah. uh, you know, anarcho-capitalist or really free society. Uh, I'm going to read this. This is the ballot language in Colorado. Um, it says, it asks, shall there be an amendment to the Colorado Constitution concerning marijuana and in connection therewith providing for the regulation of marijuana, <laughs> permitting a person 21 years of age or older to consume, possess limited amounts of marijuana, provided for the licensing of cultivation facilities, product manufacturing facilities, testing facilities, retail stores, permitting local governments to regulate or prohibit such facilities, requiring the General Assembly to enact an excise tax to be levied upon wholesale sales of marijuana, requiring that the first $40 million in revenue raised annually by such a tax be credited to public schools, uh, and requiring the General <laughs> Think Assembly of the to... the children and marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I read it, and, and then I'm like, oh, wow, you know, it's a pretty tail between the legs, bow to the master, and beg for a milk bone kind of a thing, you know. I'll this take does it. Not I'll take it. <laughs> and it's weird, because I think my state, Wyoming, which is, you know, borders Colorado, I think is going to, like, respond by making it the death penalty, because so much more is going to come across the border. <laughs> They're going to build a know? wall, like, along the Mexico border. <laughs> yeah, um... I don't know. It just didn't seem very freedom sounding to me, man. And with all of this, plus, uh, you know, it's like the governor in Colorado said, don't break out the Cheetos just yet. I mean, yeah. there's so many hurdles that this sets up before it exists, right? Don't they have the, to have a don't break out the Funyuns and Hot Pockets yet. <laughs> oh, our friend in uh, somebody in Prague is on the chat room and he just posted the uh, the UN target. Uh, it's nice, got like nice. it's got a bunch of targets. It's got the Republican Party, the Democrat Party, the anti-gun symbol, the United States Federal Reserve, the TSA. Oh, oh! I wanted to mention my dad, who was interviewed on here two weeks ago, um, got something stolen by the TSA on his return trip or uh, on his trip to the next leg. Bottle of I water. About the, he he did a target. I just came out shooting. Remember? Uh -huh, no, not uh -huh. a bottle of water. It was the target, and he was so proud of that target. And oh, I, I, I watched him pack it. I handed it to him, and he, and he folded it up and packed it. And when he got there, it wasn't there. Nothing else was missing. But, uh, mm. I mean, I'm assuming Why, Why would somebody else, do that? That's retarded. Who else has that, access to your, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it was just, pretty just good just for, you know, 91-year-old guy shooting at 25 yards in freezing temperature, uh, shooting at 22 I'll post this target. The first ones are high, but then, um, you know, I told him, oh, that rifle is, uh, you know, it's zeroed for 50 yards. So just shoot, uh, you know, compensate for it. And then the rest of them were all in a four inch square, which is, you know, pretty. And a lot of them were in a like two inch square. It's pretty damn nice. good for a 91 year old guy who yeah. never used, he hadn't used a scoped rifle in 40 years. And he was really proud of this, man. It was like father son shooting, you know, first time we gone since we were 14. And, uh, you know, we braved, it was like, wet it was snowing wet snow it was freezing out there and he's old and skinny and like braved it and we went out and did this and he was so proud of it and it you know he wrote the date on it the distance uh casper wyoming michael and jack dean it was just him though and uh the tsa stole it or somebody in the airport stole it from him you know that's freaking ridiculous yeah i mean it, it's just kind of weird to me because I've taken my gun back and forth on planes like five or six times. Yeah, but uh, if you st if they stole a gun, you'd notice, you know, or you could like yeah. file a claim. Well, he, know he noticed yeah. the target missing you could say too. It's worth something. 
Yeah, yeah. Scumbags. This, this, this was worth mostly sentimental value. Pick it on a 91-year-old man. You know? Despicable. Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> they have plenty of precedent for picking on the elderly. So yeah. uh, that's their thing, man. You know, when, when we took him to the airport. another example. I haven't been to an airport for five or six years. We took, and the Casper Airport's pretty mellow as airports go. But uh, we stood there. We walked all the way up to where he hands his ticket in, and we stood on the side and watched them and kind of mad dog them, like, don't, don't mess with my daddy's junk, you know? Uh-huh. Um, and uh-huh. they were watching us watch him, and they were really gentle with him. And, uh, but, you know, who knows what they, you know, they weren't gentle with his luggage. I don't know if it's Casper people. It's probably on one of the, yeah. probably in Denver. That's where my silver got stolen by the post office. Oh, really? Uh, I'll be right back. My cat needs in. Talk about bullshit uh, like this. Yeah. No, I wanted to... I had lots more on this marijuana thing because we're always telling people not to vote and, you know, people listening might be like, not vote? Hey, you can vote yourself legal weed. So I do want to address this a little bit more. Um, I want to read some of the language in the Washington state measure. Uh, This is very informative both for... Uh, the way these kinds of initiatives in, in Washington State and Colorado have worked, um, what what concessions you have to give to the state in order for the state to, uh, in order for voters, you know, even voters to grant you a little bit more freedom. Uh, the Washington State measure includes a 25% tax three times, all right, um, when the grower sells the pot to the processor. Then they're taxed again when the processor sells it to the retailer, then a third time when the retailer sells it to our customer. So that's 75% uh, total since it's 25 three times um, it gets taxed. So that's a lot of chunk uh, that the government is taking out of this. And I'm sure that that's how they pitched it to the people was that this is going to raise a whole lot of funds uh, in order to get the vote through. Um, so like I said, th- this... It's not really saying, it's not declaring your freedom. It's not saying, hey, I have freedom of ingestion. I'm going to put whatever I want into my body. It's saying, please, master, please let me have a little treat every now and then. Uh, so, <laughs> please let me. Um, I worked so and, hard slaving to pay you my taxes. Please let me have control of my own brain right, once in a right. while. Plus, there's there's li- there's licensing and stuff involved. So if the and, and both of these, uh, it's important to point out, both of these were initiatives, right? They were people who signed uh, petitions and sent them to the um, the attorney generals in the ver- various states. Uh, Please, and in master. Fact, yeah, the people that it, like recently said it's okay. You know, worked with a federal judge to get them to say it's okay to put cameras on private property uh-huh, without a warrant. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's yeah, the people yeah. you want to help you with your liberty. Yeah, and well, they had to send it to the attorney general eight times in Colorado before he finally did it. Uh, he was so too stoned. Like he was like, Maybe yeah, yeah. He was stoned. He, <laughs> he was it. too stoned. Yeah, and then there's going to have to still be like tons of licensing and stuff. So I'm wondering if the states want to put the kibosh on this. All they have to do is fail to set up the the appropriate measures laid out you know they have they can fail to set up a licensing board the governor can say hey we just don't have it in the budget right now we, we can't hire anybody to do this marijuana licensing just like back in the day when they said well you can have your marijuana if it's got a tax stamp on it and then they never <laughs> created a tax stamp yeah so, so it was I, effectively know, outlawed the, the the way i became a libertarian uh i was talking earlier about my daughter dying and i just posted a uh, a link to her obituary and I've said this on the cast before, but not for a while and not to this audience. It's a new audience. So, um, you know, basically she died of leukemia and 22 years old. She was sick for three years. The last year or year and a half she was alive, she broke the law to smoke pot at the recommendation of a doctor to deal with the pain from chemo and leukemia. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I, I saw her just waste away you know, from a happy young teenage girl to a dying skeleton and then die. Mm. Mm. And the thought that somebody could have thrown her in a cage for finding some comfort under those extreme circumstances just made me fucking hate cops and hate regulations and hate judges and kind of feel like the whole thing was, um, you know, kind of knew it was immoral, but still I, I wanted to like work within the system. And then about... You know, a few years later, I got into guns after someone tried to break into our house. And uh, I said, honey, we're getting a shotgun. My, my wife said, but that says that the world's a bad place. And I said, sometimes the world's a bad place. We got a shotgun. She was afraid of it. She went out and fired it, fucking loved it. You know, a little while later, she like <laughs> has a handgun. And then we were like, we can't legally carry these in California. We can't get a permit in Los Angeles County. So we moved to Wyoming. 
got permits and uh a year later they made it so you don't even need a permit in wyoming you can, <sighs> any any non-felon adult can legally carry a gun here without a permit you can they should have had a thing uh where they gave you refunds for, uh, <laughs> for the permit right they should it's you ridiculous. know that'd be an interesting take it back if it was a free market thing you could do that you could go back and say hey you know because somebody else would this. offer it yeah there'd be competition yeah. but uh yeah. yeah so um you know i and i read this book I, I was buying gun books because I didn't know much about guns. I took some gun classes. We took some safety classes and some shooting classes. And then I started buying gun books. And, you know, I bought, I bought – the only book I could find about shotgun was, like, about turkey hunting. But I bought it anyway uh, and kind of liked it. Uh -huh. And then it said people who bought this book also bought. And it was a book called You and the Police by a guy named Boston, uh, Boston Tea Party. Boston. I, I read that book in one sitting. And, and it was weird because it was like – it was a book on how to not get busted by the cops, but it was written for square people who don't break the law. And I was like, wait, you know, what? Huh? You know, uh, anything I'd seen about avoiding the cops was written for, you know, hipsters steal who this do book. drugs. Yeah, steal this yeah. book. <laughs> um, which I read when I was 13 and it warped me. So, yeah, that was important too. But In a good way. In a good way. But, you know, I read this book and it, and it was like, it was talking about like, open carry states and how to deal with the cops versus non-open carry. I'm like, what's open carry? Uh -huh. And I, and I searched on the internet. I was like, wait, what in most states in America, it's legal to carry a gun openly on your hip. <laughs> and in Wyoming, the cops don't even care. And I like literally like, found this out overnight while my wife was asleep and I woke her up early before she had to go to work. And I said, Honey, we're moving to Wyoming. And she was like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> and like nine months later, we lived here. So, um, nice. The cops do care if you're you know, a reporter. Yeah. And that book, <laughs> yeah, you've been, we'll talk about that. But, uh, yeah, that was my journey to libertarianism. And then it's been, you know, a, a more and more narrow road to just not accepting, uh, I guess you can't not accept aggression unless you want to die, but not accepting the bullshit, you know, not uh -huh, mentally uh -huh. accepting the aggression to where like, if you have a moral argument against taxation, I pay taxes, but I really rail against them all the time. If you have a moral argument against uh, nanny laws and people ruling you, but you have exceptions, and if you're like you know a Ron Paul constitutionalist, it's like if you have that morality, you, you have to stop making excuses of like, well, it's okay in this case to aggress on people by force to get mm -hmm. them to do good. And it's like yeah. you end up with like, each man should take care of himself. Each woman should take care of himself. Everyone should be armed. People should be peaceful unless attacked. And then they should fucking shoot to stop, which means shoot to kill. You know, that's, well, that's my morality. And, and, and okay. So there's also room for it, though. There's panarchy, right? So if you hate that idea and you don't want to be self-reliant and you're a lazy bastard uh, and you, you want hire other someone else you to carry the gun for you. <laughs> yeah, you want to live off the backs of other people. Go live in a commune, right? What, what the beef we have with, with systems... Uh, government or, or I guess state systems, socialist systems, is that they force people who don't want to live in that system. They force them to participate and fund the system at the barrel of a gun. So go have your society like that, but make sure everybody involved in it uh, has consented to it, right? There's no such thing as a social contract because you can't uh, be bound to any contract you didn't sign. That's, that's law 101. So... Um, you know, if you're going to have your society, give people a chance. Make them say, yes, I agree to live in this world where you, where you will steal my money. And I won't call it theft because I've agreed to give it to you. Uh, but then if Nima Vidati is in your geographical area, say, hey, Nima, do you want to be a part of the system? And I'll say, hell no. Leave me out of it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know, uh, the government doesn't do that. They don't they don't do that. You, you we don't have freedom because I can't say uh, there's no box on the IRS form that says, would you like to pay taxes this year? There's no somebody, box like somebody that. in Raleigh, North Carolina is downloading the guns and we DVD drip. I think the or drip? DVD rip DVD rip. <laughs> I wonder if that's DVD one of our drip. listeners. Is that, is that when you crush up the DVD and snort it? Who's in Raleigh? You, you we can see get you. the guns and we directly to your brain. <laughs> yeah. Or you just get hooked up to the DVD drip. Ah, yes. You know, they put a little yes, like an IV. Uh, yeah, IV in your vein. And yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was a when I was a kid, I was like in second grade, and I used to go to school. I was always like, man, school's so lame. I wish in the future they just had like a plug you could plug into your brain and, and download all the info you need. And I guess that's kind of what the internet is, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it still has to go through my eye hole, but uh, I just sit there, plug the computer into the internet, and then all the stuff gets downloaded to my brain. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's like a DVD trip. 
Yeah. People are talking on the chat room about, do you really need a gun in Wyoming? And I'm like, yeah, there's bears and there's meth heads created by the Montana Meth Project. Yeah, yeah. There's but there's also like, man. you know, even in places where, you know, you need a gun here a lot less than you do in New York City or Los Angeles or San Francisco or anywhere I've lived, New Orleans. Plus, um, freedom's not a need-based thing, yeah, man. That's exactly Freedom's it. a want-based thing. And you if know, you want a gun, who cares if Michael needs a gun? You know, do, you need, do you need to wear clothes that look good and you like them, or should we all be walking around in gunny sacks? Yeah, yeah. Do you need clothes? Potato, potato sacks. <laughs> do you need fancy clothes? No, you just need something to keep the cold and the heat off you, man. Yeah, exactly. And when people say, like, why do you have so many guns? I'm like, you know, I ask women, like, why do you have so many shoes? Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't you just need one exactly, pair? Exactly, exactly. And that, that's something everybody can grasp. Even my, my wife or came up so with that independently guitar. of hearing yeah. that from you. Or so many guitars. You know, why do, why do musicians yeah. need more than one guitar? Yeah, yeah, man. You need, uh, you need a different tool for a different job, or you just like to collect things. You just have a passion for it. Uh, yeah. I, I really liked in the yeah. Guns and Weed when Lou's talking about, because Lou, uh, in the movie, um, what's his day job? He's like a, a mechanical engineer or something like that. For an oil company. Uh, and he loves. He talks he's the, about he's how the he, black dude bear, wearing. But he's the black dude that sounds like uh, a white constitutional. You know, sounds like, like Brian when, Gumble. <laughs> yeah. No. When you no, I don't mean the way his voice sounds. I mean uh-huh. like the things he's saying sound uh, like what uh, you think of okay. when you think of like Peckerwood who lives in the woods with too many guns. Uh, you know, uh-huh, Lou, Lou uh-huh, says yeah. those kind of things. And, yeah, and he's, uh, he's got the he's the got body the armor M sixteen or the AR yeah. fifteen slung over his shoulder. AR, yeah. <laughs> and um. You know, he he goes on to say, you know, it it it's a hobby too. You know, he's he's just fascinated by um by the engineering that goes into the machine of the gun, um, both the the modern ones and the historical ones. He loves to look back on the guns that are a hundred years old, two hundred years old, and be like, "Wow, that's how they made it work before. That's how they built something that could fire a projectile at that speed before you know modern uh, engineering and manufacturing techniques, that kind of a thing." So, um, guns are, guns are awesome. Some people love guns and it's a hobby and who cares if they need it, if they want it, who is anybody else to deny them their pursuit of happiness, especially for those people that say, well, well, they shouldn't, uh, how, how are you going to keep them from doing that other than by sending a cop to their house with a gun? So <laughs> either way, whether you love guns because you understand self-defense, um, you love guns. And if you hate guns and want somebody to take away the guns, you still love guns because you're going to need cops to go there with guns. You, you need guns, guns to get what you want anyway. Guns. Yeah, there's some gun grabbers in the, uh, in the chat room. I don't know if gun grabbers, but somebody's making yeah. penis jokes. Which, uh, oh yeah, yeah. I don't really it's because they have end. a small one, and they, really buy. they should, ah. if you have a small penis, I'm I'm assuring you, uh, get get a few guns, you'll feel a little bit better. Yeah, um, that's what I've heard. I don't know. I think <laughs> I think that people who want to aggress and get guns, like cops, have small penises. I I have a pretty average sized penis, and uh, it's really good. I've actually <laughs> a lot of women and a few men, and they've all liked it a lot. And uh-huh, come back uh-huh. for more, and to the oh, point yeah? of bugging uh-huh. me and having me. Tell him to go away. <laughs> but uh, yeah, man. okay, okay. It's not a, it's not a penis. Substitute. That's relevant. You know, it's like, do you carry? People say, do you carry a gun because you feel small? And I'm like, well, there's I'm five five. There's a lot of people bigger than me in the world, and there's a lot of people that you know are shorter than me in L A. that want to kill me. <laughs> yeah, it's the equalizer, right? I mean, you could could you could you win in a fight against uh, a seven? If, if Shaquille O'Neal tried to mug you. Would you have a chance without a gun? Or just, you yeah. know, two 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 Vato gang members that are doing an initiation that are, you know, smaller than me and have yeah. guns and, and that's knives. that's the other thing is I'm not how I'm not pleased with the fact that uh that states the state allows us to have handguns. I don't think that that's enough freedom, which is oh, why I is. also don't yeah. think the state and voting for things like concealed carry permits or or permitless carry that to me is still the same thing as these pot laws. It's still it's still begging the master for a milk bone uh when you should be escaping from the plantation. Um because you know, I had you told me the story about the guy in, in New Orleans who got mugged. You told me the story about you getting mugged. And I guess it's a New Orleans thing, but I've got a guy at work now who's from New Orleans. And he had a friend who got mugged by like eight guys. Um, you know, if eight people are running up on you in a dirty New Orleans street, uh, you're going to have to be really good with the pistol. But, but uh, if you got an AK on your back ready to go, I mean, 
they probably won't even run up on you, right? Maybe. I don't know, man. Somebody, somebody's would, actually, it's an interesting complaint I've never heard about having too many guns. Someone in the chat room saying it's rampant consumerism. I don't believe in having <laughs> lots of things just for the sake of having them. And I called him a communist and he said, that doesn't make me a communist. I'm like, it may, you know, let's take the communism thing away. It's like, what's wrong with owning? Here's the thing. I am not a rampant consumerist. Uh, I don't, I spend about a hundred bucks a year on clothes and half that's on like shoes that, you know, won't will protect me from the wyoming winter um i am not extravagant the only thing i really spend money on is art supplies you know put money back into the bit into the the business that loses money of spending all my free time to do this podcast uh, <laughs> you know i buy microphones i buy preamps i buy tubes i buy computers i buy memory <clears throat> yeah. and i buy guns and I'm, i don't buy a lot of guns actually i have 15 guns and i bought them all in about a two-year period of time and I think I'm where I need to be, and I don't have any need to buy any more. Although, you know, if I had a windfall of money, until I'd you buy feel some. like it, yeah, 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 um, yeah. I don't buy the consumerism argument either uh, for anything because um, the thing, if you think about economics, the thing that that increases wealth is people spending their money on things they want. What what wealth increase is is people getting what they want and trading something that they want less for what they want more. Um, so whether it's guns or donating to, um, you know, a puppy rescue, that's the same thing because you're trading something you want less, the money for something you want more as in a gun or puppies to be healthier. Uh, so that's just the way human action is. That's just the way the economy is. So if Michael wants to buy a lot of guns, that's not rampant consumerism. That's him, uh, creating wealth because he's happier with the guns and it, it, creates well obviously uh the people who benefit off of that is both michael and the gun seller and the gun manufacturer so i, I don't buy the consumerism argument uh at all yeah yeah and you know there's a lot of somebody else is saying like the only thing you need for home defense is a shotgun which isn't true and if it were true is there a reason i shouldn't have other guns you know no but no reason really, at all and, and also that, that's that's their opinion why should their opinion be something that you base your decision on yeah. and all i'm saying that's my opinion too so don't it's base an uninformed you, it's uninformed too first of all yeah. my shotgun only holds six rounds and that's a lot for a shotgun um mm -hmm. you may need more than six rounds so you know yeah. you have stuff with 30 30 rounds um secondly a shotgun is not easy as easy to grab in the middle of the night as a handgun to maneuver around dark hallways when you hear a noise with you know flashlight in your hand thirdly shotgun won't go through body armor rifle will go through a lot yeah. of body armor and a lot of criminals mm -hmm. you know home invaders wear body armor and they wear the cheap shit that you know protects against handgun and shotgun but a rifle will penetrate it yeah and what plates. if someone's attacking your home from 100 yards you know a shotgun isn't going to do you much good or 200 mm -hmm. yards mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, so I'm going to stop looking at the uh, chat room because I got stuff. I got notes, and we haven't even touched them today. Yeah, I haven't been looking at the chat room either. So uh, you guys can talk amongst yourselves. We're going to go on with the show. Yeah. So I've been getting criticism from statists who you know criticize me for not voting and saying, you're doing nothing. And I say doing nothing is better than doing evil. <laughs> that's that's a slogan that's great that should be on a bumper sticker doing nothing is better than doing evil yeah it's true yeah. it's true yeah oh the name of this episode is libido dominandi ah yes uh which we which i was trying to come up with on was it the sunday show or last thursday yeah. show somebody called I, in with it i knew the concept i was trying to come up with it. somebody called in he was like oh the the latin phrase you're looking for is libido dominandi which uh go ahead and tell the folks what it means michael it's basically getting a hard on for uh, tyrannizing people. <laughs> yes, the lust for power or domination. It's just like Let's it sounds. See. If you know a little bit of Latin, libido the will, dominandi. The will to power, the desire to dominate, the lust yeah. for government. Mm -hmm. There's a German synonym too. It's uh, God, I can't even say this. Will der Macht, which is the will to power, will to might. Ah, uh, it's a good uh, one. I like mm -hmm, that. Mm -hmm. It is, yeah. it is, and uh, we don't have that. That's not a good libido to have. Um, that's a pretty, that's a pretty creepy sexual perversion, right? <laughs> yeah, or, or just uh, you know, thing to make you happy. That that's that's a pretty evil thing. Uh, if controlling others makes you happy, um, and 
so you know democrats and statists uh well, i guess i guess democrats more than anybody else they, they try to make this argument that that we need a government because people are bad and there will always be people that try to control you and if if there were no government then you would have people that would gain power and try to control you anyway and so you need to have a, a controlling factor to prevent the controlling factor uh, which to me, libido dominant, is just chasing is just chasing its tail in a circle of logic. There, um, I think libido dominant sounds like the name of a Blue Oyster Cult record. It should have been. I think the only Blue Oyster Cult song I know is "Don't Fear the Reaper," which is really fun to play. It's on a really rock good band, song. But, it's a really uh, good song. I don't know about anything else. Yeah, but they were in like spooky. Well, they had something called they had a song or record called "Dominance and Submission," but they had a lot of things with uh, Latin titles and spooky titles, and you know they're they're they had a weird logo like a runic logo which i think was the uh i think it's like the greek symbol for lead you know like heavy metal um mm, mm -hmm. but it was like a broken cross with a hitch at the bottom of it they were weird they were weird and spooky and they had a laser show when they played huh? i remember mm -hmm. natalie merchant who went to my high school coming back to uh, one monday coming back like probably still high on something when she was about 17 and going and I was like, was know, she into drugs, man? I always thought 10,000 Maniacs was like something my mom listened to in the morning was, on her way to school. Um, well, she came back and she was like, Michael, I went and saw Blue Oyster Cult this weekend. <laughs> and then like, you know, wow. 10 years later when they were huge, I saw her at a show and I was backstage and she's like, Michael, I saw Black Flag recently. You know, like her loving these bands, you wouldn't expect her to. But I've said huh. it, <clears throat> you know, I saw them like 70 times because they were a local band in Jamestown, New York when I was going to college. She's a couple years older than me, but we went to the same high school and college. Both skipped our senior year of high school and went to college because, but the school wanted to get rid of both of us, the high school. Um, Why? Because we had authority problems, problems uh, with authority. Uh, really? Yeah. You? But, but before they got signed, they were, they had an edge and they were, yeah. you know, I remember her like, I mean, they had this one song called pit Viper, it's on their first mainstream record on the major label, but they did an EP before that that was recorded by like students at the Fredonia College sound program. Uh, and it's a really good record that still has the edge. If you can find their first EP or hmm. find MP3s of it, it's great. And the song Pit Viper, I mean, on the record, it's probably about five minutes long, but live it'd be like 15 minutes long and they do this like tribal drum feedback breakdown in the middle of the song and she'd be rolling on the ground screaming into the microphone like a banshee like mm. looking like she was possessed it was pretty cool and you know huh. now yeah. it's now there's something your mom listens to but yeah yeah 10,000 maniacs were it, evil i, I guess they first. came up with the name when they were had an edge like that because i remember when i was at like seven thinking this is the band called 10,000 maniacs i know it sounds They're like named, one housewife i know <laughs> 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 they're named after uh 2000 Maniacs, which is a like early Texan independent slasher zombie film. Ah, okay. Which okay. even so, it sounds like one housewife, man. Yeah. <laughs> She's really anti-gun too. She, probably, she did a lot of LSD with Skip Lunch in college, but uh, my friend Skip Lunch, but she's, uh, she's anti everything fun. She, mm, lame. <laughs> yeah. Lame. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess people, they are anti-gun because in their brain they're anti-violence and they don't want people to have bullet holes in them uh, which is a good but we're the same way right want, yeah. i mean i don't want Hell people yeah. to have bullet holes in them either uh that's why i want guns because if somebody tries to put a bullet hole in me it's better if they get a bullet hole in them you know universe wise uh <laughs> for morality it's better if the person trying to shoot me gets a bullet hole in his head than if i get one in my head so um, I don't like bullet holes at all, but uh, I'd rather the aggressor have one in him than uh, a victim. Yeah. More cowbell, so, man. More cowbell. Plus, I, I mean, what the thing is, is you want you want power to be uh, dispersed among as many people as possible, right? That seems to be something that, that liberals, some liberals at least, they get that that main concept that that you know you don't want power concentrated in the hands of too few um the gun argument is the exact same way right why should uh the power to shoot hot lead at somebody uh the power to have that that equalizing weapon why should that be concentrated in cops of all freaking people in cops really is that what you want you want only cops to have that power you want only the military to have that power 
the, pe- the the people who cut off little boys' ears and wear them as trophies, you want those people to to have a monopoly on that power? No, no. Uh, if you're truly um, a peace lover, you want that power to be dispersed amongst as many people as possible because Peaceful that would people who are educated pe- by watching the DVD gun training with the non-aggression <laughs> principle. But I think that 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 is a result. If the power is dispersed, uh, you it'll be a necessity for you to be educated on it right uh you you will have to uh, learn to use it responsibly because everybody has one your neighbor has one uh your wife has a gun my wife carries uh, it, it'll a gun. become it'll become a necessity to be polite and practice a uh, good etiquette for having yeah, your mom, everyone has one. your mama carries a glock should be a compliment <laughs> well just like it's a it's a necessity to um to drive safely right because everyone has a car uh just about you know even that's licensed unfortunately but uh everyone has a car so it becomes a necessity to learn how to drive safely it becomes a necessity for all of us uh to not only they, drive they safely but to, to drive defensively they teach the opposite in in public schools you know uh, actually in wyoming they have hunter safety classes for juniors and seniors, which is awesome. In schools? Yeah. Nice. If you're going to have a government monopoly, they should at least teach you some life skills instead of teaching you how to vote, which is what they do in most <laughs> schools. Uh, we talked about it before. I mean, like, you know, the, the neighbor kid was up on a ladder and no one was holding it for him. And I'm like thinking like, okay, they used to teach that in school. If you have someone hold the ladder for you, now they just teach you to vote. And he had an Obama shirt on. So, but, uh, you know, in schools, generally high schools now, they teach you in grade schools, you know. Um, they teach you if if you see a gun, call the police. You know, if you see your parents' <laughs> legally owned gun, call the police. And and they teach you to fear them so much that they won't teach you anything about safe use of them. And if kid, that's why when kids find a gun, they're curious about it and they end up shooting each other or someone else because like mm-hmm. a kid who's brought up, you know, with gun safety isn't going to do that accidentally. He's not going, he might do it intentionally, but, uh, right, right. well, problem I, I like Boston's whole thing of, uh, you know, he's an- answering a question. Uh, I don't know if it's from a reader or if it's just a theoretical or a rhetorical question. Uh, but the question is, you know, how, do, what do I do, you know, as, uh, to somebody who owns tons of guns children. with kids? He says, you don't, you don't gun proof the house, the household, you gun proof your kids. Um, you know, you make it to where your kids understand and respect the weapon and won't do anything idiotic with them. Uh, because, you know, trying to hide them from your kids, that's not always the best solution. You know, when I was 13, I was able to find uh, find lots of fun things in my parents' room that were very illicit. Uh, I'll leave Dirty it magazines, that. dildos, uh, etc., etc. So <laughs> Guns and weed and dildos. So the thing pot. is, yeah, I mean... Kids are kids, man. You're not going to be able to keep them from snooping around and and getting what you got. So uh, teach them to be peaceful, respectful people, which you should do anyway, right? I mean, that that should be the first rule anyway, regardless of whether you have guns. You're sounding really robot-y, whispery robot-y. Yeah. Uh, Screw my equipment today, man. It freaking sucks. Yeah. Why don't you, um, why don't we take a little break here, play some music and our new ads and, uh, Oh, yeah. And you can you you can uh, maybe Be restart cool. mumble or something. You, can you do that while we're while we're playing ads? You won't hear it. You won't hear the ads while I'm restarting mumble. Oh. Um, Why don't you restart mumble right now? And I will. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll talk about something. I was going to say. Let's see. Um, about the library thing. A lot of the reason the people who were pro library tax in Wyoming, which is in in my county, they wanted to raise the sales tax one penny for two years. And a lot of people voted against it because they thought it wouldn't expire. And the people trying to put it forward says it will expire. But we already have an extra one cent tax from 15 years ago that they said was temporary. So Bob Mahan replied, but who will read the books? And a lot of it goes back to like Casper and Cheyenne used to vie for who was the coolest, uh, you know, who was going to be the state capital in Wyoming. So it's, you know, it's people trying to put a gun to my head to make me finance their dick wagging contest with another town and this goes back to the cowboy days and Cas- Cheyenne just got a great new library that they stole a bunch of money for so Casper wanted to steal a bunch for ours and Ryan Orock said you know that the IRS charges books as inventory with some sort of funky taxation on them so excess books must be destroyed to prevent massive tax bills for publishers so the IRS is responsible for destroying more books than even the Nazis in their book burnings and uh, 
I said, did you know that libraries often pay 150 bucks for a DVD? Don't know what they pay for books, but it's likely higher than retail because it's stolen money. It's not their money. You back, Nima? Nima's not back. Yeah, I had uh, I had a little more a little more stuff to tell him that was good. That was really good. Where is Nima? Is he there? Is he there? So um, this is a site. Yo. Yo. Hey, Kim Holloway was defeated. Is that a good thing? Totally, man. She's a freaking carpetbagger. Liberal yeah. wanting to control everything. You know, she said she was born here. Oh, whatever. But she, she I heard she was from New Jersey. She acts like it. She's like the city council member in Casper who's somewhere to the left well, of Nancy. I mean, Lucy. she could have always been born there and raised on the east. I don't know her life story. I just know she <laughs> seemed very... She seemed very antithetical to the way the rest of Casper felt about things. Yeah. Uh, and the you're way sounding, somebody... You're sounding robot again. I'm looking at a baby squirrel up in a tree about 20 feet, sunning himself. It's a really beautiful thing, man. Mm. Okay. So uh, um, I just linked this thing in the chat room if you want to look at it. It's called caninesforcops.org. And it's, uh, it's a site that raises money to buy drug-sniffing dogs for police agencies that can't afford them. That's lame. Do I still sound robot-y? Yeah. I don't know what's I pressed up, the button. Well, mm. I did. Well, you know, the, I ordered more memory for my uh, Mumble computer, and it was bad memory. So I sent it back and got a refund, and I ordered more good memory now. So I'm going to go from three gigs to four gigs on this old laptop pretty soon. So that may help with, uh, you know, in okay. a couple days. It okay. may help, but who knows? Canines for cops. Yeah, one of my problems with this canine for cops thing, other than that they exist, is they have eleven thousand likes on Facebooks. On Facebooks, the Facebooks. They say the heroic stories of narcotics seizures were astounding, and this is really perverse. On their why we exist, why we exist page, they have this quote: "All that is necessary for evil to do to triumph is for good men to do nothing." Edmund Burke. Uh. Which is a good quote, but it's a good liberty quote, in that but context, they're perverting it, context, they're perverting right? it, man. Yeah, Completely. totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, I was talking to a dude at work, and he was like, uh, I was trying to convince him to not be a cop. And, uh, Fiend phone. Fiend uh, phone. Okay. okay. Maybe that's him. Fiend Let's find out. Fiend yeah. Phone. Why don't you reboot your computer, Nima? Fiend You're uh, really sound. I don't think it's going to help, man. I think uh, okay. the world's just conspiring against me today. Hello, but I'll fiend. try. Talk who's to your fiend. Who's on the fiends? Hey. This is Jeremy from Ohio. I called in last week. Oh, yeah. I think we, uh, you were the last caller, right? And we got cut off. We were talking about Iran. Yeah, there was a little bit of a misinterpretation of what I was trying to get across, but that was because of, I think, time. We ran out of time. Yeah, well, this show, we but, don't have the time limits. We were about to take a break, but we'll postpone that. Go ahead. Explain okay, explain so, your what we did wrong. Okay. Well, we didn't do anything wrong. But, um, <laughs> so I... <laughs> So the the, anal the the analogy that I set up is most people, and this is without, before I, I'm setting this up, most people just think Iran's crazy and they want to bomb us. And there's nothing that you can say to them that will talk them out of it. Even if you talk about the mistranslation of wanting to wipe Israel off the map and all that, they don't care. They, they have it ingrained in their head that Iran's crazy. So I just try to make a point to make it sound as stupid as possible as to where they're just not going to do the attack on Israel. So the thing is, there's a guy in Hawaii, as, you know, we live in Ohio, and the guy in Hawaii wants to get a gun. If he gets a gun, he's going to shoot you and kill you. You know, he says he's going to. That doesn't mean he's going to, but he says he's going to. Also, this and this may be going a little bit too far, the guy in Hawaii has a collar around his neck that could be detonated and blow his head off, okay? So the guy in Hawaii, would it be moral to get a gun, go to Hawaii and shoot the guy in the head? No. Even if the guy were able to get his gun and come to Ohio and, and attempt to kill you, let's say he shot you, his collar would go off and explode. The collar going off and exploding is kind of America. Because if Israel were attacked, it's a suicide thing. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive-aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah! Are you all out of cute cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! 
You've read books, attended lectures, and you know the Constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire. But there's still one thing missing. Buttons! Freedom Fiends now has buttons. We have Freedom Fiends, Anarchy Gumbo, and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom. Wear them with pride. Use them to start conversations with statists. It's only $6 for four buttons, including shipping. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says Buttons. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download uTorrent and start seeding Fiends episodes. Follow twitter.com slash fiendtorrents to grab the past episodes and new ones as they post. Leave your computer on seeding the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seeding the Fiends, the more drone-proof we'll be when the boot comes down. That's twitter.com slash fiendtorrents attack Iran it would be this gigantic war and I think they're smart enough not to do that it's just my own thought on the thing so again it's a little rough and I probably have to flesh it out more but you know I'm just trying to make people think that this is kind of it's completely illogical it's never going to happen they're not going to bomb Israel for no reason so I don't know does that make any sense yeah and thanks for explaining that uh, we did get cut off we have real tight time constraints with the commercials on the Sunday show. So sure. Cool, man. Yeah. You got any, any, no. other, any other thoughts today about anything? Um, yeah, there's a, <laughs> my, my one friend, my yeah, one friend, who, I have thoughts. <laughs> um, I, I, I agree. I think you had made a, a, a point in the last cast about um, politics being, I don't know if you did like a religion. You did say something about atheists. Yeah. You made a point about atheists and that it, at least like people that are religious, like you can't prove that there's no God, but with, with uh, politics, you can easily prove that these people lie and they're wrong yet people believe in it. Like it's a religion. And so it's kind of scary. It's a religion to the point. It's a religion. Like in the 1500s, it's a religion where criticizing it gets you ostracized or can get you arrested and killed. You know, yeah, I went into one of my customers yesterday and she's a huge Obama supporter. She's just like, she, she's a finance director of a city and I was talking to her and I have a really good relationship with her and I, and I know that she is. And so I started making fun of Republicans and saying how I was goofing on them because I did. I had a lot of fun with making fun of Republicans yesterday and, uh, cause with Romney and, uh, and I, we, we got to talk and, and she said, well, I just can't believe these people bought into this guy because he lied and changed his position. And I said, well, to be fair, you can type in YouTube. You can go to YouTube right now and type in Obama lies and spend a good hour watching videos of him lying. She won't do that. that she won't do and that. That's said, like well, telling a Catholic, you know, search Catholic priests, fuck little boys, and you'll get lots of <laughs> interviews about it, too. They're not going to do it. No, no. I knew she wouldn't do it. I wanted to back her into a corner. So she said, well, because this is the status, especially the Democrat status Obama support supported. This is their answer that everybody's always said when I hear this. They say, well, I just believe that they don't really know what they're getting into and they can't do the things that they say they're going to do, which is a bullshit <laughs> answer. Because if you're in the system, you know how corrupt it is. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's so like, oh, I Obama was this pure, innocent little boy who wandered into this evil <laughs> room of de Republicans not knowing what would happen. No, the guy yeah. studied his whole life and did everything in his life to try to do that. Well, when you're in the machine, you see the lobbyists come. You see that everything's bought and paid for. It's like there's no, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. You know. And I, so then the next point I made to her, I said, well, a couple of things that bother me about him and you know, then I'll leave you alone. I said, if you, so that I think that they don't, they're not consistent with what you're saying. I said, so Obama ran saying he would be the most transparent and that whistleblowers were very important to the United, you know, to being transparent government. Then he jailed said, a bunch so, of them. <laughs> yeah. I said, he's prosecuted more whistleblowers than any other. He's worse than Nixon, and, man, and, with that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was a little like shocked. And then I said, and then I went down the, um, NDAA, and I said about how he said he wasn't going to sign it. He held it for like a month and then signed it on New Year's Eve and was paying attention. Because most of them don't I was paying attention. I, was, I knew about it like an I hour was, after it happened. I was <laughs> so then I said, and I said, it's not even, that's not even that bad. I said, then he put a signing statement saying that he wouldn't use it. But he's already lied twice, so do we really trust him? No. I said, and then he, uh, 
you, it's the perfect out. A judge rules it unconstitutional. So at that point, you could say, well, we're going to have to get this out of there. But he doesn't. He sends his lawyers out there after it, attacking it, trying to make it legal in order to ret retain that power. And she looked at me with a blank stare on her face. And then the, you know, her brain warmed up and went back to status mode and was like, well, we're just going to have to disagree, agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah. And I don't, I don't buy agree to disagree with status. And they always say that and they get, uh, they use the word like, you know, agitate. You're getting agitated when you like to try to verbally defend against their statism. And the thing is, oh yeah, agree to disagree, you know, is someone who, doesn't like anal sex saying you can have anal sex in your home. I guess we're going to have to agree to disagree. Like I'm not going to, you know, but, uh, agree, agree to, they're saying I'm going to continue to mug you and may possibly kill you by proxy, but I don't want you getting upset about it. That's what voters well, from both parties are saying. The, that connection's never made in their head and, and it is so hard to get them. But all I'm trying to do is insert, insert little, I don't know, insert some earwigs, earwigs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then eventually it has to all like everything will come together in them and they'll, I don't know. I don't think it'll, well, I find the, the easiest thing I find to try with people like that is explaining the, you know, and this takes about 60 seconds to really get out. It could take a lot longer to talk about it in weeks or months for them to get it if ever. But I try to explain to them that all laws are enforced at the barrel of a gun. All uh, you know, all taxes are enforced at the barrel of a gun. And they're like, no, they're not. And I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. disobey a law or don't pay a tax. You know, what'll happen? And they're like, well, if you don't pay your tax, yeah. they'll just send you a bill. And I'm like, okay, then what happens? And they're, you know, eventually yeah. men will come to your house, point, you know, have guns on them. If you say, get the fuck out of my house, they will point guns at your head, throw you to the ground and drag you to a cage or kill you. So yeah, that's the ultimate enforcement of all laws and without uh without those laws you know without that f enforcement laws are just suggestions they're not really laws so i explained that to them and mm -hmm. then and then i explained to them that democracy which they've been taught since a child is the ultimate form of government and the best way to be mm -hmm. uh and far better than no government um, democracy is 51% tyrannizing 49%. And I point out that Hitler was democratically elected. Uh, and it's you know, not even that though, because of the people that don't vote, you know, it's, it's, a well, it's 50, it's 49, 50 of 1% of the voters, you yeah, know, but, and, yeah. and that's another thing is when I tell people I don't vote, they get upset and they're like, well, if you, if you don't vote, you can't complain. And I say, if you do vote, you can't complain because you're, I just, you're, per you're perpetuating a system that basically, uh, instead of being fair, what it does is it punishes everybody more or less equally, you know, and yeah. since it's a winner take all, and I'm not saying we should have direct democracy or better representation or get rid of the electoral college or any tweaks on it. I want it to yeah. like, fucking fail. I want it to be gone. Yeah. I want there to be no cops. I want there to be no government. I would rather be on my own peacefully trading with my neighbors and shooting the meth zombies with an AK 47 if I had to <laughs> and keeping all my money and being able to do what I want without, if, as long as I don't hurt anyone who doesn't aggress on me. And that is like yeah. a mind blowing concept for those people who've been taught since they were children that the state is your mommy and daddy and nothing comes to you from outside the state and all, you know, they're, I mean, even constitutionalists and small government people and a lot of libertarians believe that, you know, the government, like people say the second amendment grants the right to keep and bear arms. No, it doesn't. Yeah. The second amendment tries to put it into writing. The second amendment didn't exist when the revolutionary war started. In fact, the revolutionary war was over two things, taxation without representation, which I say, even with representation, it's not very cool, but uh -huh. And the other thing was they wanted to take away the guns. They wanted to disarm the militias and the militias said, no way. They wanted to take away the gunpowder that they had. They wanted to keep them from being armed and they said, no way. And they, there was no second amendment. There was an innate right to bear arms. And, you know, these guys risked treason hanging by for treason to use their right to bear arms to protect themselves. So the second yeah. amendment doesn't grant rights. It doesn't, nothing from a government grants rights. And, it's really hard. And I have like slightly different raps for all these people. Like that's kind of my rap for like NRA, small government Republican mm -hmm. types. And, you know, 
for other people for for status liberal Obama people, you know, I don't know. They're they're a weird bunch because they're a lot of them are so religious that you can't get through and they are they're under yeah. like a spell you know it's like oh there's a black <laughs> there's a black president who's and he's basically <laughs> like george bush but you know black and talks nicer yeah he's a little smoother yeah he's smoother <laughs> i i told uh i mean i i don't know he, I, he I, kills I and jails do, more I, I briefly he, he kills and it. he kills and jails more black oh, people God. he kills and jails more black people than george bush did it's paul his policies lead to it, which, yeah. they, which they don't understand. But he I, does I, it. I, I say he like does it. The, I he does oh, it. He does it. I don't say his policies. Yeah. He does it. Without those well, policies, well, he, it wouldn't be happening. I agree. Um, he could I end the drug war out. tomorrow. He could end the drug war with a with a stroke of a pen, and he he would never consider it. And he could he end that, the he, he could end the wars. He could end the wars with a stroke of a pen. He'll never do that. He's George Bush, man. Well, He's anyway, right anyway, uh, right along with it. we we need to take a break. Um, okay. Do you, I talked a lot. Do you want to wrap this up? We need to take a break and uh, get okay. our technical All I was problems say fixed. Was, is the the whole the reason why people are that indoctrinated? Like I briefly mentioned last time, is from the time they're in grade school, it's twelve years of brainwashing into statism. That's all it is. Yeah. And that's why people are that that bought it. So there's nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. So. But, well, there's a lot more. Well, thanks for whatever. thanks okay. for calling in, man. All right, no problem. Have a good day, Worms. All right, Nima. Hey, yeah, yeah it was very hey. patient of you. How long have you been back on? Oh, a while. I uh, I went off and tested the mic. I think the problem was uh, Mumble's doing that stupid thing where if you're too loud, it overloads and makes you sound like a robot. Uh, yeah. So so you turned down a little bit. I'll turn down a little Mumble. bit. Turn yeah, I, t- I turned down yeah. quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I mean, the problem was yeah, I switched okay. everything right before right. the show because the stupid S&M was giving me that uh, wishy-washy noise from the, the fan S&M power. audio preamp. So, so that wasn't so, the yeah. tube. Did you throw the other tube out? Uh, no, I didn't throw it out. No, it's not the tube, man, because as soon as I turn phantom power off, it sounds clean. Okay. It's phantom power. It's it's whatever is inside of that box that powers the phantom power. Well, I'm going to send you a link for the $17 mic I'm using that sounds better than the condenser mic you're using. What are you using uh, now for a mic right now? The ribbon mic. Yeah. I don't hear any it's, noise. It's Mumble not running through Mumble, S&M. It's Mumble, running straight into the mixer. Uh, Mumble kills the noise. It really does. Yeah, Mumble kills the noise, plus there's Except no the preamp on this, uh, on this ribbon mic. It's, it's naked. Yeah. Uh, if I send you a link, will you actually whatever. order this $70 mic live on the air? <laughs> um, uh, <coughs> I need to pay my internet bill, but whatever. I'll make some money tonight. Sure. I'll, uh, sure. or, I'll order it on the air. All right. 17 bucks. What, what, right. What's that, a lunch? Yeah, yeah, I'll order it on the air. Some weed. Uh, yeah, uh, a little yeah. gram or so. Gram. A gram or so here in Austin. <laughs> a little bit. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Here, maybe. I'm posting it to the, uh, the chat room, so you can oh, okay. go in there right now and order it uh, while we're talking. Yeah. Sure. Sure. How is the sound levels now? How is? How are? No, how, how is? Because be? really, it's no. one total level I'm talking about. But you know, the level in the mix. Yeah. 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 This mic rocks, man. Mic rocks. When you get it, um, throw away the cable that comes with it and just use an XLR cable. It's an XLR to quarter inch, and it really doesn't sound good. Uh, uh. Actually, that's how I uh, that's how I cable the ribbon mic too. Even when it sounds <laughs> really? awesome, dude. Uh-huh. Don't. What? Do you have Do you have an XLR to yeah. XLR? Yeah, I got like two or three of them. Absolutely, use that. It sounds. It has more volume and less noise. The the mixer I use doesn't have an XLR input. Okay, but when the you input. get this mic, use this mic with XLR to XLR into the SM Audio Two preamp. And then quarter inch to quarter inch into yeah. the mixer. Yeah. Okay. So did you go to the tube museum? No, no, I didn't. Oh man, we should go to the tube museum. Can't use this in Uh I guess Nima sucks is an invalid chat room name, so I got to rename myself. Nima sucks. Someone's already <laughs> using that. And they have oh, is that it? That's already uh, taken. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me get to the chat room. I'm sorry, audience. I suck today. Uh, you kind of do, man. I mean, what you're yeah. saying is good, but I've been I've been carrying you on my back since before we started today. I'm <laughs> yeah, gonna find you a Bitcoin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, man. 
Okay, did you yeah, order that I, thing yet? I would have ordered it already. Yeah. Dude, I can't even get on the fuck on the freaking chat room, man. How okay. was I supposed to order it? It I'm said gonna, I had I'm an gonna, invalid I'm name. Gonna, I'm gonna pigeon it to you. Um. Okay, let me go refresh private conversation. Dude, you never. I, we, I, okay. Uh, ignore that thing I just sent. We'll go back to that. That's the. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's the tube museum. That's the tube museum. I thought you were gonna send me the. Uh, it was on my. I'm mic. so far ahead of you that I thought you were already there ordering it. So I had the tube museum on my clipboard, but no, I, I was want I, apparently you can't put a space in uh, <laughs> in, in your name. chat room name, and so I not. said Nima space sucks, yeah. and I spent that time getting back on. Okay, the chat room. so I just sent you in in pigeon. I just sent you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, everyone says you're a little you. too quiet now, so I'm gonna turn me down and turn. Maybe okay. If I, I'm gonna if I, try. If I turn up, if I turn up, mumble will make me sound like a robot. So. I don't know what to do, man. Okay, I'm turning up the gain on the butt because we now have gain on the butt added. Because okay, we wrote that, to that the, was the whole point of gain point. on the butt. Yeah, you came yeah. up with the idea. I wrote to the guy who designed the broadcast using this tool and had him put a in output level fader. So I just raised it to 2 dB above 0 dB, so it should be better. It's actually looking pretty low. I'm going to turn it up a little more. All right. That's probably right. too And then, yeah, and then turn yourself down, and then yeah. that should solve the problem. Okay, well, it takes We should 30 both be loud. Okay. It, it's looking really low, actually. But Is um, it? Yeah, I think mm. it's been really low for a while, but I guess people just turn up. They're used to internet stuff that isn't very loud or good or clear, like most of the internet. So Yeah. So uh, I, I, I mumbled, I pigeoned you, so many programs. Look in Pigeon, click on that Amazon link, add that to your cart at least. I did add it to my cart. Now I got to order it. Yeah, I don't know why it it, uh, it has. Um, okay, okay. Okay, someone's asking for our Bitcoin address. Um, I'm going to give it to them. Okay, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Bitcoin address. Yeah, say habla Bitcoin. That's right. Say habla Bitcoin. Say habla. See, see, see. Say habla Bitcoin. Um, give me just a second. I'm ordering this. I want to make sure I got the right card on file. Hold on. Yeah. Talk yeah, amongst okay. yourselves. I'm going to talk amongst myself. So, um, yeah. Yay. Butt gain. How is the butt gain? That's what I want to know in the chat room. How is the, how is the overall volume now? Is it better? Is it too low? Is it too high? What's it doing? What's it doing, people? All right. So I want to talk about the tube museum. Um, I'm going to repost this link to the Tube Museum. It's pretty damn awesome. Nima has recently uh, discovered the joys of the tu- of tubes. He's never even seen a tube before. And I sent him a tube preamp, and then I sent him a new tube for it. And he just really got off on fetishizing the like actual physical, like this is a thing made of glass, and it heats up and looks really good and sounds really sexy. Uh, let's see. I will order the mic for Nima if you want. Um, I don't know how no. we do, how we do that. I, I guess I already, you could just donate the price of it, and then I'll send that to Nima. How's that? 17 bucks. Donate 17 bucks to us at uh, – I'll give our PayPal link, and uh, yeah. Okay, PayPal. good. I've, I've ordered the mic. Yay. Yay. Okay. No, oh, th- and thank you. thank you. Thank you, Fiend Fan. I appreciate it. That helps. <laughs> uh, I'm so I'm so angered by what's been going on today that I, I forgot that I, I opened my door <laughs> and uh, my mic stand is laying on the floor outside of the door because I forgot I like threw my mic stand out of my office in anger. Today? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So. I'm mellow. I'm looking at this baby squirrel that's still – he might be dead. He's been, he hasn't moved in about half an hour. <laughs> He's about 20 feet up in the tree like on a horizontal branch and uh, the, lying in the sun, sunning himself. It's about 65 degrees here today. It's pretty nice. So, yeah. 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 Good crunch, for you. Crunch. Good for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the, the fix though is uh, we obviously don't – I obviously don't have the – the Thursday show settings down yet. I thought I had them. I have them all written down. I, I use know. the exact same thing, but we should get on like 10, 15 minutes before. Well, I was on totally ready to go five minutes before and you weren't on yet. I was on. It just, you couldn't hear me and yeah, I have no idea why you right. couldn't hear me because I was using yeah. this exact same settings well, I always let's use. Let's say so. 10 minutes for the Sunday show and the, I mean for the Thursday show and the Sunday show, we'll just go on it at the hour because we have six minutes to add. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. So well, we yeah. never have we never have these problems with the Sunday show. 
Uh, hint, hint. Is that? No, it's not their fault. It's my fault. I have no, a completely it's... different setup for the Thursday show than I do for the, the Sunday show. Well, it's not their fault, but the the... <laughs> I don't want to go into it. I don't want to denigrate our corporate masters. They're wonderful, and I enjoy that they let us do this and let us help build their empire. Uh-huh. Um, uh-huh. I don't know though the way that the way that it's getting done at LRN, it just works. You know, you can't yeah. do it wrong over there. And uh, yeah, but I found uh, out what they did and sent it all to these guys. Maybe I, I guess, but it's the grass is always greener thing too. Because uh, on LRN, you those can't ads. you can't complete a thought because uh, the ads interrupt us all know, the time. Every twelve seconds, there's eight minutes of ads. It seems like. So go yeah, to the Tube yeah. Museum. It's really wonderful. I'd like oh, to yes. play with you Tubes. at the Tube Museum. I don't really uh, like the way the site works. You click on it, and it opens a new window for each tube. But uh, check out these tubes, man. They these are, are from beautiful. 1926 to 1941. They have yeah. different ranges of years on here. But uh, you know what? What? What I've always thought was fun, even before I used tubes in uh, audio production. Um, was on campus on UT campus. They have a in the Electrical Engineering Building. If you go in there, they have uh, tubes like from tubes. throughout history on display everywhere. Nice, uh, all well, all along the walls. And that's it's really a, cool. That's a go. real tube museum. This is a an online tube museum. You know yeah. what's really cool is uh, there's a couple tubes in here that are like, if I can find them, that are actually like early TV camera tubes. Like what would be the image sensor was a tube. Ah, wow. Yeah, I don't even know how that works, man. I know. Tubes are crazy. Well, you know, the first thing that worked like television was actually kind of an analog binary digital thing. It was like basically it pointed a li- you know, it pointed lights at something and it had an aperture that had a photo cell that like, you know, a, ca- a digital camera now has a photo cell that has like 3 million sensors or something in it. This was a photo cell that was one sensor. It could only sense the presence of light or the absence of light and uh-huh. And it had either like, off or on. It had a mechanical rotating disc with a bunch of slits in it, and it would scan whatever it was looking at, you know, the same way TV uh, cathode ray tubes scan now, like across it, you know, five twelve lines per second. But it was like twenty lines mm-hmm. per second. It was really low resolution, huh. and it would just feed input in of like on or off of whatever it was yeah. looking at, and then yeah. they'd send that to like a cathode ray projection tube by wires. This is before they tried it with radio and. I think it was called a kinetoscope, or it was an electronic kinetoscope, and it, it's really huh. interesting. It's binary, you know, digi- it was digital. It was on or off, and really yeah, low yeah. res. But That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and probably super expensive, too. <laughs> well, it was experimental. I don't think that was ever produced. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You're enough. still way quieter yeah. than me, but, you know, literally, yeah. when, you, well, when you get this I'm, mic, I was talking quiet. I was I was doing the um, good times voice, so yeah. I could talk louder and closer. How's that? How's yeah, that? That's good. I, good times. Yes. Yeah. I'm gonna send you. Uh, so you're not <clears> in the <throat> chat room. You can't be in the chat room. You're not allowed now. I'm in the chat room now. I changed my name to just Nima. So okay, I should be well, there. Look in the chat room. I just posted a really cool like tube radio from 1923. Uh, okay. Okay. Salty hash. Yeah. Salty that's hash. What's that? Great name. Who's that? That's somebody oh, in the person. chat room. Right. Named Salty Hash. <laughs> Salty Hash. Yes. Smoked sea salt hash. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can't find this uh, the early like image gathering Ooh, specialty tube cool, thing. Cool, I don't cool, know where. Cool. What What is this you sent me? It's an awesome thing. It's a people it's in a the tube. chat room. Look at it. Yeah. It's, it's tube three tubes. From, yeah. Yeah. What does it okay. do? Yeah. Boy, we're we're we got really low levels, man. I don't know what's up here, but people are not turn turn the butt up. That's what the butt's for. Yeah. What's a butt for? For turning okay. levels up. So turn it up a little there and turn it up a little here. So yeah, I'm just accommodating for like your your incredibly low volume here. It's not yeah. working. That's all accommodate, the way up, so. accommodate me. Accommodate you. Yeah. All right. That should be a little there. So well I guess uh I can't find all the tubes I need, but um we had some more notes, you know. Uh, uh, Gerald Gay won uncontested. Our neighbor we huh. used to go shooting with my my hmm. state my state rep. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He asked me to. Um, he has, he's going to pay me a grand to do a radio commercial for him, and I turned him down. I was like, I don't do politics stuff anymore, mm-hmm. and he didn't even reply. And I thought he'd at least like try to talk me into it, but uh, it's because he was uncontested. Yeah. Ah. Uh. 
Hey, uh, I got an idea for the levels. Well, hold on. I, I guess up? I can turn up. Give me just a second. All right. And then I'll have to turn down. And All right. How's that? Am I that's, loud that's, enough now? That's a good bit better. Let me let me turn up. Okay. Now we're, All right. Um, yeah. That looks pretty respectable. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, I can hurt everyone's ears that's listening, but they'll just have to turn down. We're, we're not even Sorry. at the level we should be at normally, but. Hey, yeah. one day we'll have this figured out, so. Listen again sometime, maybe, if you don't hate us. Yeah. You know that site that buys drug dogs for cops that can't afford them? Um, they, they mainly operate in Texas. <sighs> so gay. I know. I know. Why would you buy anything for a cop? Why would you donate anything to a state goon? Ugh. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was thinking if Obama does a big gun grab in the second term uh -huh. or, the next, or in the next week, um, it'll make nearly half of all Americans into felons, and that nearly half will include almost everyone who voted for Romney. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that'll be the point. I don't I know, man. I think it is. I think it is. Do you, do you think he's going to do some kind of big gun grab? I don't think no, he can I get away with it. No, I think he's going to do little incremental uh, nitpicky stuff. I think, it's, I think one thing he might do that he could do really easily is make it illegal to... Um, order ammo through through the mail through UPS, uh, mm, which you know mm -hmm. we can do now. We order lots of it, um, and I think he may may make it really hard to import weapons and ammo. So uh, you know our so, Mosins will have to uh, depend on the ammo we have or can buy, uh, and then we'll have to go buy Winchester ammo for him, which is like the price of normal ammo. But it does not eat them. Did I? You know, I was talking about that I was going to use WD forty on my AK. Oh, I had done it last time we talked. Yeah, okay, I fixed it. I fixed my AK with WD forty. Nima is uh, grayed out now. I don't know what happened. Nima is just having big old problems today. Gun training with the non-aggression principle, volume one. Basic handgun and rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy to understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun training with the non-aggression principle, volume one. New DVD from Michael W. Dean, available on Amazon. Your house is your property. Love the fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone proof. There's a torrent club link at the top of freedomfiends.com. You can also blog the fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. Amazon and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available and you can also comment on our site or better yet, comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread the Fiends message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. Did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom fiends and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The Freedom Fiends have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. So, Nima's not here. I can't hear Nima. I don't see him. This is amateur hour here, man. You know, I blocked a whole bunch of uh, people on Facebook the day of the election. It was like people that were really statist. They were saying like, yay, Obama won and the world's perfect. And people that were like... Romney lost. He must be horrible. It's all those immigrants or whatever. You know, I just, I, I blocked like 30 people on election day. It was a good like acid test to see who was what, to see who was, uh, who was horrible and wants to use guns against me by proxy, but thinks they're peaceful.
So I'm going to post something here. It's a really cool. It's a site about an electromagnetic computer built from relays. This is pretty damn awesome. So go and check this out. It's pretty nifty. Yeah, it's pretty damn nifty. Nima, Nima, Nima. Where is the Nima? Nima, why don't you? Nima should call in. Nima, <laughs> call in. <laughs> I'm telling Nima to call in on the on the phone line for the last half hour, man. This is just ridiculous. So I finally got to try some. Uh, everyone should go to statelesssweets.com. It's this company in California makes absolutely amazing uh, confectionaries, and they're run by an anarcho-capitalist woman who is really good, and she's really good. And on top of you know sending things out, this is not a paid ad. It's uh, it's just a good product we really dig. Statelesssweets.com. They're pretty damn nice. Check them out. They're wonderful. Dig them. Is Nima back yet? Nima, call in on the Fiend phone. Call in on the Fiend phone. Nima, Nima, Nima. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody said that uh, the Freedom Fiends were both puerile and serious, which is kind of my favorite place to live and work. It's also known as bathetic which is one of my favorite words, which means, you know, a, a sweep from the elevated to the gutter in art in the same sentence or the same song. Uh, a lot of my favorite musicians did it. Queen did it. Pink Floyd do it. Nick Cave does it. Leonard Cohen does it. Tom Waits does it. My band Bomb does it. Did it. I think I posted my band Bomb. I don't know. Bomb. I think uh, if we had that band today, we'd get in trouble. Can you imagine like going through airport security with big anvil road cases that said bomb on them? We used to do that back in the 90s. Would not be easy now. You could probably tour with anthrax and for extra extra problems. Yep. Nima? Oh, Nima. God damn it. Gosh darn it. Uh, he's rebooted. I'm just going to call him on the phone. What do you think of that? Yeah. I'm just going to I'm going to link bomb my band bomb in the chat room and then uh huh somebody's quoting something i said but i can't remember where i said that there are two major products that have come out of berkeley lsd and unix we don't believe this to be a coincidence i know i said that but where was that the harvard review in my friend's article uh what does this mean in english <laughs> random quotes Oh, he said that. I didn't say that. Jeremy S. Anderson. I don't know, man. I think I said that, and Jeremy S. Anderson took it. I don't know who he is. Let's look him up on uh, Wikipedia. Jeremy S. Anderson. Yeah, I said that in like 1996, man. That guy stole that from me. doesn't matter. doesn't steal, but uh, yeah. I said that on kittyfeet.com. It's not there anymore. I mean, the site's there, but it's, it's been completely replaced. It's now uh, the Anarchy Gumbo podcast. But I said it on kittyfeet.com in 1996. All right, I'm going to find Nima. Nima, Las Vegas. Nima, Las Vegas. Nima. Nima, Las Vegas. I do most of the talking on this show, but it's a lot more interesting when Nima's here to be the uh, the foil. So we need to get Nima on here. So we're calling Nima right now on a, t on a phone, on a telephone. Yeah. I think Nima's been droned. I really do. Because uh, this computer's not even on anymore. I can't see him in the pigeon. I can't see him anywhere. Bicycle just rode by my house. I think I think that was a spy. I don't know. What was that? What was that, man? What's going on? What's going on? I don't know. The mailbox is full and cannot accept any messages at this time. Goodbye. <sighs> Neem's been drowned. I really think Neem's been drowned, man. I'm worried, people. We're through the looking glass here. I don't know what happened to Nima, but I'm going to talk really quietly so the drones can't hear me. Is Nima there? Hello, Nima. I think the drones got you. Yo. Yeah, everything's weird. Everything's weird. The sky has gone black. Uh, yeah, I don't know what's up, man. Very strange. Where did Nima go? What happened to Nima? I think Nima's in, in the tyranny camps. In the FEMA camp. 
Central Scrutinizer ad. This is the Central Scrutinizer. We're working very hard to spend your tax money to keep you from hearing things like freedomfiends.com. That's Fiend right. phone. Fiend phone. Fiend phone. Oh, Fiend phone. That's so loud. Fiend phone. Randy, Fiend I'm going to have phone. to hang up because... Uh, Fiend phone. Uh, hey, Randy. Hello, Nima. Hello. CZ. Can you hear me? Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Of the watchers who employ me, the central scrutinizer, to keep you from hearing things that might make you think. My fellow scrutinizer and I do not want you to visit freedomfiends.cz. Do not visit freedomfiends.cz. Hi, Nima. Welcome to the show. Hey. I'm glad you could make it. You're calling in on the, f- on the um, internet, so... What'd your wife do? Happened. What happened? Um, she unplugged my modem. So Why? I was sitting there trying to troubleshoot everything. I don't know. She was trying to get things to fit into a, a power strip. It wasn't, it wasn't in. punishment, was it? I doubt it. It was <laughs> just um, par for the course today. Oh, my God, man. Well, people yeah. were worried, really worried about you. Um, we, we thought you'd been droned. <laughs> I was worried too. I thought the Time Warner cable was uh, turning off my internet or something. <laughs> like, With- Call them, pay the bill, and she's like, "We're not overdue." And I'm like, "Oh, well, I don't know, man. I don't know what the hell's going on. It just seems like everything's conspiring against me today." Um, I could probably call it on the mumble though again now. Okay. All right. Good. All right. Do that. Mm-hmm. Thanks, man. I will do that. Bye. Yeah. That was Nemo. That was Nemo on the mumbles. Yeah. Let's play another ad here. We got another ad. It's kind of creepy. Yeah, I hear you, Nemo. You there? Hello. Hi, Nemo. I'm going to play our, um, I'm going to play an ad okay. here. A couple ads. Okay. You All figured right. out how to play ads? Uh, yeah, with a microphone up to the speaker. Ah. Okay. Did your world collapse when Ron Paul didn't win? Don't keep hoping for some great man to fix government through government. Complete your evolution today to full-on anarcho-capitalist. Reward your brain with the freedom beans and quit breaking your heart with some politician. While the libertarians argue, But who would build the roads? The freedom beans have already built the roads and moved on to making the great media content of the libertarian paradise. Freedomfiends.com. That's freedomfiends.com. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. I'm back. So turn up, turn up a little bit. Okay. So like all the level, up. all the level fixing we spent the first hour doing is probably the window now, huh? Okay. No, no, everything, everything's the same. Should be the all same. All right. I'm still way louder oh. than you, but I'm, I'm as low as I can be. All right. How's that? Much. Is that uh, better? I bet I'm, I, can, I bet I'm cutting okay. out on mumble now though. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Good mix. Good mix. Uh, okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Right. We'll keep it like that. So I don't even know what we're talking about. <sighs> Randy England tried to call in. I guess he could call back if uh, I had to hang up on him to get you. Ah, oh, okay. So <laughs> worst show, worst freedom fiends ever. I don't know. I mean, a, a bad freedom fiends is better than most podcasts. So it's still pretty good. <laughs> and you know, I think it's kind okay. of interesting. It's uh, uh, it's live. It's radio. interesting watching Nima suffer. My suffer. my shit was tight today. Everything I'm doing's right. Yeah, good for you. You want a gold star? Yeah. No, I want a Bitcoin and a donation. Yeah, it's like, okay, okay now we're going to read the, uh, the the litany of donations from last week. Um, one donation. All right. <laughs> Next. Uh, yeah, yeah. You've got well, see, Dharma. Treat, it, treat us like a government, right? Uh, I suck so much, so send me money. No, treat us, <laughs> treat us like a, the church. Tithe to us voluntarily. Send us 10% uh, of your income. Uh, yes, that's what I want to actually happen. But Yeah, me too. We'll see. Uh, well, new microphone is on its way. Uh, that obviously won't help with the problem of wife's unplugging um, modems. But uh, did you make you her know. go stand in the corner? <laughs> no, she's thoroughly sorry. I did you not get. You mad. guys don't have that kind of um, sexual relationship. Do you? Uh, no, we go don't. put on we a don't. slip we and don't. stand in the corner. That's what I'd be doing right now. Yeah, yeah. And then I'd be, uh, and then I'd leave her there for about thirty seconds, or not not ninety seconds, and then be like, "Good girl, good girl," and come like pet her and <laughs> help her do things to her. Yeah, not your yeah. wife, my wife. Ah, yeah. 
Yeah, man. I this shit, this shit be, I love this comment from Animal. This shit be podcast award winning. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should submit the archive of yeah, this cast yeah. to the podcast. Is there, is there an award for worst podcast, podcast ever? Man. Yeah. Yeah. There should be. <laughs> oh, my God. Yikes. I was fine. You'd get it. You'd get that award. No, nah, we're good. We're good. It's all good. Yeah. 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 Well. It's a uh, it's a hole, right? So if I suck, you're only as good as your suckiest sucked, uh, yeah. partner. Sucked in yeah. your hole. You get yeah. sucked so, into my um, suck. Yeah. So we're talking about you know buying drug dogs for cops that can't afford them. Um, you know, another thing oh. there was a there was a website I went and looked at that was like a site that only sells stuff to cops. You know, they have holsters and badge holders and tasers and pepper spray and all that shit but they have a canine section and the canine section the amount of shit that you need to have a canine drug dog the amount of money you need to spend is unreal i mean it's like really just to outfit one drug dog for a cop car is like 20 grand um and I, ugh, people spend money on this people vote for this no matter who you're <sighs> voting for you're voting for your local police to steal twenty thousand dollars per drug dog so they can yeah. you know come yeah. into your house and they had like training kits which was interesting because they don't have the actual substance in them like the meth kit the pot kit the bomb kit um i thought they did i thought that, these that, don't. that was why it was so funny when the the cops well, they, in wyoming just, lost a box full of meth labeled meth yeah <laughs> if you search like, wyoming <laughs> drug cops on google the first thing that comes up is a story about a bunch of guys training a canine with a no, that was a box of meth they stole from some meth people. Uh, but but it was still it was actually full of meth, and, and it, it was, was labeled meth. meth. <laughs> and it was they left it on the car and drove off. And then they yeah, said yeah. in the paper, um, you know, the Riverton police or whoever it was lost a you know box with four ounces of crystal meth meth in it, and they would <sighs> I like thought it was whoever, like four pounds. I thought it was like some massive. And, and it was like whoever finds it, would you please call them <laughs> at. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. It's funny. It's funny because somebody was just walking along the side of the road and looked at it like, "Wow, that's a freebie." Yeah, and I could see like you know if you accidentally <laughs> dropped like a gram bag of meth on the ground and some kid found uh-huh. it, they'd probably arrest you for like distributing to a kid. But the cops, yeah, can, if, if it was can, a regular dude, can, yeah, the cops can drop four pounds of meth on the highway. Oh, and they said they came back and looked for it an hour later and couldn't <laughs> find it. It could have blown away in, in Wyoming. But. Uh, uh, yeah, that's always been like when, when I was a kid, that was my fantasy because once I found like a pack, or, like half a pack of cigarettes like <laughs> at a park and I was like, awesome, free drugs I just found. And uh, ever since then, I have this fantasy whenever I'm walking that I'll just like come across like a pound of pot and be like, wow, awesome. <laughs> Uh, I, nice? I'd leave it. I Freebie. think it was a setup. manna from heaven. <laughs> I, th- I think it was a setup. I told you about yeah. when I was in San Francisco, that kid that was in that band, the Rolling Scabs, who was like 13, we had him take a, a bag, plastic bag with like an ounce of baking soda in it. So it looked like Coke. And we had him go like drop it in front of the projects. So and my friend lived uh, across the street and we watched from the second story window and we had him do it like five or six times <laughs> in different bags and just watched like crackheads come up and pick it up and scurry like cockroaches back into the project. Nice, nice, uh, nice. The last time we did it, like this white concerned citizen saw him drop it, stopped his car, double parked in the middle of the road and like went to the pay phone, left his car running in front of the projects, went to the pay phone and called the police. <laughs> <laughs> so lame you know you know in a so libertarian lame. paradise it would be calling the the private police to help find the kid to return to find the owner to yeah him, but yeah you know, like when you find a debit card on the ground that wasn't the case I'm mm, sure. mm. tisk tisk yeah. yeah yeah well people are are so brainwashed by it like there's a dude i know uh who i work with and um he you know he's a college kid so he parties we'll put it at that and yet he was telling me i'm always trying to convince him to not be a cop and the other day he was like yeah i want to work for like the dea or the, nah, the atf and i was I like be a worse cop i was like wow those are like the two worst agencies you those can agen- think like, of even if you're a cop those are the worst agencies yeah, like they have yeah. the worst record of like right, you know right efficiency and yeah. and, and, and not I, I, I tried to, what, what i tried to do is i tried to take the waco angle i was like so so the atf like they're horrible like they're responsible for massacring all of those people children, in waco children and he was yeah and he was like he was like oh well those people were crazy and i'm like so what do you think it's okay to go into a mental hospital and murder everybody because they're crazy <laughs> like being crazy does not equal a death sentence or it shouldn't those people uh, weren't and, particularly crazy too i mean they no, were no. they were and, weirdos but they were painted they were 
were painted so wrong by the media. Like, first mm-hmm. of all, they mm-hmm. were painted as being a white supremacist church, which, in fact, one third of the members of that church were, were black. black. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. You know, and they were painted as being child molesters, which there was no evidence of. It was completely made up. And, yeah. you know, like, we're going to save what? save these kids from child molesting by burning them to death when they right. weren't even being molested. Well, here was his next argument, and I don't I don't remember. I was a kid when the, the Waco thing happened, so I don't remember exactly what I was on what tour with my band Bomb in Oklahoma <sighs> watching nice, on TV nice. going, what is this? But, but the guy who, who had wanted to be an ATF or DEA agent, hopefully now he's changed his mind, but um, his next line of argument was, uh, well, they had a stockpile of assault weapons. And I was so like, the DEA. so my best friends all <laughs> so over Wyoming. my best friends. <laughs> I know. What the hell? Who cares? Who cares? It's like saying you had a stockpile of newspapers. You know, and actually, weapons if, are, are if, just as guaranteed if, in the uh, Bill of Rights yeah. as newspapers. If he's going to be a, a cop, he should understand that the term assault weapons is a specious it's term. It's fake. Yeah. 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 yeah There's a said. such thing as an assault rifle, and they did not have any. An yeah. assault rifle yeah. is an intermediate cartridge uh, select fire you know, machine gun, burst fire, single fire. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a real well, so, AK so then that's he was not like, neutered, for instance. He, he was like, well, okay, okay, or, fine. Or the, guns, or the guns that the DEA carries, you know. Right, right. <laughs> the AR platform, select fire, those are assault yeah. rifles, but not yes, assault those weapons. Assault, assault yeah. weapons is something made up by the gun lobby, anti-gun mm-hmm, lobby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. All, uh, weapons, so, all weapons are assault, can be used to assault. Exactly, exactly. Like the baseball bat is an assault weapon. Yeah, uh, a meat cleaver. Uh, hell. A belt, an know, Obama saw, saw paper, an Obama belt. paperweight, paperweight, a bobblehead. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anything you use to assault somebody is an assault weapon. Uh, it's it's assault it's and pepper a meaningless shaker term of Obama yeah. and um, Nancy. <laughs> yeah, assault yeah. weapon, yeah. assault. And, and so then he was like, "Okay, fine. I guess you, you're poking holes in that." And he was like, um, "But you know." So, so I started to go off on the freedom of ingestion thing, and I was like, you know, you, you like to party, right? Do you think you should be thrown in a cage for that? Do you think people should be thrown in a cage for doing drugs? He's, he's like, he's like, no, but there's a lot of other things that go on, you know, a lot of violence and things like that, you know, from cartels. And I'm like, yes, but all of that is caused by the enforcement. All of that is a direct result of the DEA and the ATF trying to enforce or pursue the drug war. Uh, you know, it's just just like prohibition, and, and he kind of you could see wheels turning in his head, and he was like, "Oh, yeah, I, I guess so." So, um, you know, one you of know. the really disturbing things to me about that website where you order stuff for your canine unit, um, first of all, that like the the kit said they had like no no active ingredients, so you know the heroin kit is going to have hydrochloric acid or something like, and the you know, they're all going to smell like other things that might be in a car. So they're going to get positives no matter what. One of the really uh, disturbing things to uh-huh. me was they had one that was a black, uh, a smokeless powder kit. So it's basically to really? teach dogs to sniff out guns and bullets, guns. which mm-hmm. I can see they need it for the airport, but it's like, where else is that going to be used? You know, and how yeah. and when and why, yeah. why yeah. do they need to train a lot of local dogs to sniff guns? What do they got in mind? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's always been, you know, in their line of questioning uh, before they search you, uh, you know, cops will usually ask uh, the the questions, you know, do you have any illegal substances? Do you have any weapons I need to know about? Things like that. Uh, as My if that answer was the business. Wyoming, when the Wyoming police pulled me over and asked me, uh, you know, do you have anything in your car, you know, guns, whatever. I, I say uh, I have nothing but but personal legal property. Nice, nice. That's, That's from good. you and the police by Boston Tea Party. I have nothing but personal yeah. legal. The only property. time I've ever pointed out the gun was when it was in front of me in the open glove box, and they said, "Hand me the registration papers." I said, uh, "Before I reach into the glove compartment, I want to tell you, officer, that there is a load." And he interrupted me and said, "Yeah, I see mm-hmm. the gun. Just give mm-hmm. me the registration." Well, Which, he meant registration, your car registration, not yeah, your gun. Not registration. your gun. There's yeah. no gun <laughs> registration in Wyoming. Yes. We're the Wild West, man. Not. We're the Wild West, and there's like no hardly any violent crime here. The only violent yeah. crime here is like uh, almost the only violent crime here is like people who know each other, family members, and you know spouses and stuff. There's just so little, you know, mugging on the street, beating people up, home invasions. There is, there was occasionally there's like drug related stuff, but, but like, it's people that know each other. They know so yeah. that guy has drugs there. There's right, just right. you know I don't do drugs. and again that, that's a direct result of the drug right. war. I mean I am. Pretty safe from compared to LA, uh, where I used to live, or San Francisco. I'm very safe from random criminal trying to come in my house to try to steal something. 
Yeah, yeah. And I carry a gun because uh, it's not a need-based thing. It's I carry a gun. Yeah, yeah. Who cares if yeah. you need one? You can yeah. carry a gun because you want to carry a gun. And, you know, that's kind of the whole point of guns anyway is who knows when you would need it, you know? Yeah. Uh, you don't you don't want to imagine a situation when you need it. You don't want to go into <laughs> situations where you would definitely need it. Um uh, I mean <laughs> it's 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 like a freaking uh fire extinguisher, right? You don't ever want to imagine a situation when you need it, but uh if you need it and it's not there, you're pretty screwed. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> exactly. If you so, see anything, do everything. Do everything. Yeah. That's, that's the TSA's, one of their mottos, or the DHS's, like, street signs in 30 Rock. Yeah, yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Oh, well, at least the show's almost over. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's, that's not, I don't feel that way. I feel like, wow, the show's finally getting back to where it's good. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, I guess it was. I guess it was. So, are you? Do you have a um a like foam pop filter for a microphone? Do you own one? Uh, no, I got the pantyhose over the circle. Okay, you should uh, you should have ordered one with that in your Amazon yeah. order, but you probably still could, or you can go to Radio Shack and get them for a buck, two bucks, three bucks. But uh, you will the, need that. The, you need for that the dynamic the mic. mic. Yes, you will need that. Ah, okay. I mean, you okay. could use your pantyhose pop filter, but it kind of like. The whole point of this mic is it's more direct. It's like in your face. You don't have this thing, this condom between you and it. Although uh -huh, the foam uh -huh. thing's more like a condom, but it's not yeah. keeping you inches away from it. You can stand up with it. You can mic control with it. it it'll. It's going to sound better with your system for the live shows, for the mumbles, than any of the mics you're using, or at least more consistent. And through the yeah. preamp, you're going to be able to get a really good volume without distortion on it. And but you may have to do yeah. a little mic technique. Like I'm talking pretty close to it and not real loud. Like this isn't yeah. my speaking voice when someone's in the room with me. Yeah. This it is should, like, hey, it, it no, should be a lot more better. my speaking voice, you know, but yeah, it's more like this man, kind of sexy. Yeah. It Sh should be good. should be good. Yeah. Um, I mean, you're not going to want to use this for recording music. You're going to want to use the ribbon mic or the condenser mic, but right. Right. It's like our it road gets more narrow and it started it more expensive and got cheaper. Like we started with condenser <laughs> mics, then went to ribbon mics. And now I'm like, use the $17 karaoke mic. It's the miracle. Yeah. 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 Well, hopefully that works. Um, I'm going to do some tests with this S and M audio too. I, I don't know. Could so I, is I, was it, th I was thinking maybe I could have touched something and and screwed it up when I had it opened. You know, to screw up the I don't think so. The phantom power, you but it was giving before. us that problem before. Yeah. Um. So you think it's the phantom power on the S and M audio that's the problem? Yeah, because when I turned the phantom power off, the noise slowly went away. Okay. And then when I turned it on, it slowly came back. You Do know, you, just, just how with phantom power, you, you know, how it takes a while for are it you to... Putting, yes. Are you putting it through something else that also has phantom power? No. Nope. I don't know, man. I mean, I never had that problem with that unit. Although... Yeah. I, I never it, did before. I've recorded has, lots of stuff with it, with uh, the condenser and the phantom power on. So, some, although some new it has... Uh, may I speak, sir? No, you may not. Okay. okay. Uh, now you may. Okay, thank you. Bitch. Welcome. Bitch wars. <laughs> that should be a video game. There should be a video game where you're a Russian prison gang and you're killing other people in the Russian prison for having cooperated with the government in World War II to fight Hitler. Boy, that's just like morally that ambiguous. Would be an awesome video game. Yeah, bitch wars. Uh, I'm <laughs> going to Google that. If that's not a game already. Yeah. Huh. No, but there, there's a YouTube cartoon of it. Uh, two bitches fight to the death in an awesome war of awesomeness. <laughs> hmm. So. I don't like mud wrestling and shit. Like I don't get turned on by. I'd rather see two women loving than fighting. I agree. Yeah, violence doesn't get me off either. Um, but uh, I think I guess we don't have men. the libido dominandi. I think that's either a turn on to small-minded men, men who want to be dominated by women, or men who just haven't seen enough other porn, and that's like what they could go see in their community <laughs> after the tractor pull. <laughs> I don't think we have that problem with porn in your community anymore. I mean, every everybody's got the internet, right? I mean, yeah, man, that was that was that was the old days when I had to wait for a showtime to come on so I could see Emmanuel in space and look at titties <laughs> when I was thirteen, uh, or, see, or be so excited that I found a hustler or a penthouse in the park. And that was the other thing. That was that was another reason I thought I could just come across a, a nice bag of weed one day because i found a, a penthouse uh, on a park bench once when i was like 12 and was like wow i never really had that gap i went from 
having my brother's playboys to having lots of sex with lots of women in a popular rock band to mm, mm. Um, having the internet and having lots of sex with lots of women after rock bands to being married to a woman who likes to have lots of sex and came to the marriage with a huge collection of porn on her hard drives that she could share with me and some of it I liked. So <laughs> uh, well, I never had aren't, the gap, aren't you blessed? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like sex is like food or eating. It's like, well, I've always had it, and I, uh, you know, yeah. you don't notice it till it's like air. You don't notice it till you don't have it. Yeah, it's like freedom. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we're getting pretty close here. If you got, can you cue things up today or not? I can. Yeah, at can least I think manually? I can. I mean, e literally everything has gone wrong today. So let's why find out. Why don't I do it the way I did it? It worked. Fine. No, 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 no. I, I want to try. Oh, it. you want to go out with a mistake? All right. Yes, I do. Go out uh, with a. It'll sum bang. it up. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Go out with the blow because it blows. <laughs> All right. Uh, just tell me when. Uh, we're looking at the clock. We got uh, 30 seconds. Say something brilliant. All right. Something brilliant. Why shouldn't Why people? I'm not saying the freedom fiends are the one true path to anarchist uh, liberation, uh, but it's too, a good one. Too early. If you want to put your. Are you queuing it up or are you starting it too early? I, I started it too early. You said 30 seconds. The thing's I, 60 seconds long. Yeah, I said start in 30 seconds, and now uh, it's start in 15 seconds. Okay. So in 15 seconds, why shouldn't people buy drug dogs for cops who can't afford them? Uh, because you don't want to perpetuate a system that steals your property of drugs through Three, stupid dogs. Two, one. Go. Go. We're not saying we're not saying the freedom fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the freedom fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal or set up a monthly contribution of as little as three dollars. Giving to the freedom fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The freedom fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Thank you for listening to the Freedom Fiends Agenda. We'll be back streaming live every Thursday from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. East Coast U.S. time on Adam Curry's No Agenda Global Radio. MP3 archives of all Freedom Fiends episodes are available free at freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S. Dot com. Worms. Yo, man, what a cluster fucky show, Nima. Mm -hmm. I think we're probably still broadcasting. Usually That's we are. Right. Yeah, we are. Let's see. Stop up, budding. Please. Stop budding. Just, yeah. uh, I will yeah. remove ourselves from their feed. Yeah, because yeah, it goes it. until. Until you hit stop on yeah. the button. Yeah, all right, we're out. Man. <laughs> yeah. That was funny. It was awful. Completely awful. Yeah. When you're not yeah. on, man, I talked most of the talking today, I think, percentage-wise, but yeah. when you're not on, I'm fucking lost, man. The, like five minutes you were gone, I was like, whoa, let's see what's in the news. Anna Cornelia. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. it's because our dynamic is a conversation. So That's why we should have dynamic mics, man. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going to love this mic. Enough. You're going to love it. It, you know, it doesn't have like the purity that the other mics have, but you don't need that for streaming. It it doesn't have yeah. it doesn't have it anyway, you know. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. So we should be good on that. And then I'll just um I don't even know if I want to play with the phantom power oh, on this. We're still recording. Let me stop recording. Okay. Uh, bye fiends. Yeah. Bye fiends. <laughs>